The opinions and views expressed in the following program are those of the speakers and the host and do not necessarily reflect those of Yokely Scott Corporation and your sports network. Yeah, I've been closer to Jesus before, so can you help me out? Can you help me out? Am I on my own? Am I on my own? Or can you help me out? Am I on my own? Am I on my own? Am I on my own? Or can you help me out? Welcome into a Tuesday edition of Running Points presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. If you're in the market for a brand new or slightly used automobile, yo it to yourself, yo it to your wallet to check out the good folks at Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. They got three things that you must have as a car dealership. You've got a great sales department, great sales department, excuse me. Oh, I'm getting the burps this morning. Yikes. You got a great sales department, a great service department, and a great finance department. And you need all three of those in order to have a spectacular car dealership, especially the finance department, because I don't know about you folks, but I know I would not like to uh, pay an incredibly high interest rate should I choose to purchase a brand new or slightly used automobile. I don't want to pay a high interest rate. And the folks at Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austintown will do their very best to make sure that you don't pay a very high interest rate. So before you put pen to paper and sign five, six, seven years of your life away, you owe it to yourself. As I've said, you owe it to your wallet to check out the good folks at Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austintown. Austin Town. All right, with you till 3 o'clock. Coming up at 2 o'clock today, we will talk YSU baseball with the skipper of the YSU Penguins, Dan Bertolini. Tell you what, that's, uh, that four-game series, uh, Penguins had dropped two of the first three games, and they really needed that fourth game as they stay in fourth place. Now, they, actually, they dropped one place uh, from last weekend to this weekend, mainly because... Uh, uh, UIC did a really, really nice job uh, winning four in a row over the uh, Purdue-Fort Wayne Mastodon. So uh, Purdue-Fort Wayne uh, dropping four to UIC, giving UIC a one-half game lead on the Penguins. They're at 13 and 10. The Penguins are 13 and 11. Northern Kentucky is 11 and 12. Now, had Northern Kentucky won that last game, you would still be uh, leading. Uh, the Penguins would still be leading. They would be 12 and 12. Actually, no, I take that back. The Penguins would be 12 and 12, and Northern Kentucky would be 12 and 11, and the Penguins would have been in fifth place, one half game in back of Northern Kentucky. So that was a huge victory for the Penguins in, in that they are now a game and a half better than Northern Kentucky for fourth place. One half game in back of UIC for third place. Uh, and they are three behind Milwaukee in the loss column, but two and a half games in back of Milwaukee for second place. And uh, as we made mention, you take care of the uh, take care of the teams that you are supposed to beat. Uh, and uh, when you're on the road, you split uh, the games on the road. Unless it's, you know, it's the, the two lower teams in this division, then you want to uh, – your your goals are a little bit different in terms of uh, trying to, you know, trying to um, – uh, stay afloat you want to you want to be able to take three out of four or sweep a series i mean ultimately in a perfect world you want to sweep every series 
mean, that's but perfection is not going to happen in baseball. It just doesn't. Uh, every once in a while, you will lose. Uh, as you look at the uh, at the uh, season this year, the first time the Penguins played uh, uh, a non conference opponent, they were in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Actually, it was uh, it was in Ohio when, where they played. They played in Defiance, but the series was on the road, and they took three out of four from the Mastodons. It's exactly what you're supposed to do. Uh, now they got swept by Wright State, but they turned around and, and took three out of four from Wright State. Uh, when these two teams played back home. So that's that's a good thing. They took three out of four from UIC. They split at Milwaukee. Uh, they split a, a series with Northern Kentucky uh, and on the road. Now it's uh, time for the Penguins to take on the, the last place team in this conference. And this is where the Penguins, uh, you know, turn it up a notch. Uh, I'm hoping that they can get a four-game sweep of Oakland. That would be fantastic because the next week you're looking at UIC and the four-game series will be in Chicago and this will be a return trip uh, for UIC. Uh, The Penguins get a return trip uh, May the 7th, 8th, and 9th against the Mastodons at Fort Wayne. Again, a team that's probably not going to be in the playoffs uh, if you're the Penguins, you want to win these uh, these eight games uh, against Oakland and Purdue, Ford Wayne. If you can get eight, eight for eight, man, that would be uh, that would be a tremendous feather in the cap of the Penguins. And and frankly, I think it would go a long way to securing one of the uh, one of the four spots that is up for grabs. And and in reality, it's one of three spots because you know Wright State. Uh, is going to be one of these teams. You you just know they're going to be one of the teams. They're frankly, uh, they're not going to finish in fifth, sixth, or seventh place. So the Penguins need to take care of teams uh, that have no shot whatsoever uh, at getting into the postseason. And uh, Purdue, Fort Wayne, and and Oakland are two teams that frankly are way behind, and and they would have to really. Uh, play some incredible baseball just to get to fourth place uh, so it doesn't look like it's going to happen for sure uh, I mean the Penguins are three ahead of Purdue Ford Wayne in the loss column and they're th- uh, three and a half games ahead of Purdue Ford Wayne in the win column so you know they're six and a half games better than Purdue Ford Wayne uh, and they're 11 games I'm sorry they are uh, six games better uh, then Oakland. Oakland's actually only two back in the loss column, but they're uh, five back in the win column. So it's so actually uh, uh, seven games. Uh, seven games uh, uh, back. Or six or seven games back for uh, for Oakland. So, I mean, Purdue, Ford, Wayne, and Oakland probably are not going to be on the radar. I mean, for Oakland, that's who YSU is playing this weekend. Oakland would have to make a tremendous, tremendous statement this weekend and uh, and get on an unbelievable winning streak uh, for this team to have any hope of of getting into the playoffs. And and again, one of the big things for Oakland is the fact that uh, they've dropped seven of their last eight, uh, and they haven't played baseball in two weeks. You know they had a uh, they had a series against Valparaiso that was canceled uh, April 9th, 10th, and 11th, and this past weekend they had their series canceled against Wright State. So the last time that Oakland played a baseball game, you got to go back to uh, April the third uh, when the Oakland lost a, a home game in eight innings to Milwaukee, 14 to 13. Uh, that, that's the last time they played. So, uh, you know, the next time the uh, they suit up, it'll be <laughs> 20 days later. Uh, that's going to be their first game. Uh, so the Penguins catch a break in, in some way uh, because, like I said, Oakland hasn't played baseball uh, since April the 3rd, and it'll be about 20 days uh, since they've uh, played baseball when these two teams play on Friday at Eastwood Field, uh, game time at 5 o'clock, and then you have a doubleheader on Saturday and a single game on Sunday. By the way, the weather, which uh, tonight and early tomorrow morning uh, is not going to be very pleasant, to say the least. 
Uh, it's <laughs> the the weather is not going to be uh, not going to be pretty in any way, shape, or form uh, tonight and tomorrow because apparently there's snow in the forecast uh, tonight and into tomorrow. Uh, so uh, Friday they're looking at 61 degrees. Saturday uh, there's a 70 percent chance of rain with a high of 63. And then on Sunday, uh, cloudy skies with a high of 52. So weather-wise, so far, so good. Uh, But like we said, uh, you know, there's supposed to be a chance of snow tonight. And and actually up in Niles, they're uh, they're looking for one to three inches of snow on Tuesday. And then snow in the forecast on Wednesday uh, with accumulations less than an inch. So hopefully all of the snow uh, melts or gets out of Dodge by the time these two teams play each other on Friday. But we'll have Dan Bertolini coming on on the uh, program at 2 o'clock. We'll talk uh, YSU baseball. Again, the Penguins are currently sitting in fourth place. Uh, They are currently a game and a half ahead of Northern Kentucky for fourth place, just a half a game in back of UIC for third and two and a half games in back of um actually yeah it would it, well there are three out in the loss column uh milwaukee has played uh 20 league games they did not have a league uh series this weekend uh milwaukee played a non-conference opponent uh this past weekend they played isu illinois state university and they took three out of four from Illinois State University. Their schedule, uh, they have UIC this weekend. That'll be a huge, huge series uh, at home in Milwaukee as uh, Milwaukee takes on UIC for a four-gamer. They'll continue to be at home uh, on the uh, 30th of May, or 30th of April, 1st of May, and the uh, 2nd of May four-game series against Oakland, and then they'll travel to Wright State on the 7th, 8th, and 9th to play Wright State for four, Uh, a four-game series against Northern Kentucky on the 14th, 15th, and 16th, and then they close out the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd at Eastwood Field in Niles. Uh, They take on Youngstown State. So, Uh, Milwaukee certainly has an interesting schedule ahead of them. They have 20 league games left, uh, where the Penguins have 16 league games left. Penguins will be playing, uh, as we made mention, uh, the Penguins are going to be playing a four-gamer against Oakland uh, this Friday, Saturday, uh, and Sunday, doubleheader on Saturday. And then you have a uh, four-game series uh, with UIC, Single game on Friday, doubleheader on Saturday, May the 1st. Single game on Sunday, May the 2nd. And then you have a uh, a four-game series with Purdue-Fort Wayne in Eastwood Field on the 7th, 8th, and 9th. The the weekend of the 14th, 15th, and 16th is an off weekend for the Penguins right now. Uh, and I don't know if that's going to uh, if if that's going to be something where the Penguins can uh, can fill that schedule or not. Uh, but there is no baseball to be played uh, between Purdue, Fort Wayne, and Milwaukee. So the Penguins are going to have a week off unless they uh, unless they schedule a non-conference opponent. It would appear that they will not be playing uh, baseball the 14th, 15th, and 16th. We'll uh, we'll talk with uh, Dan Bertolini about that. Uh, when he comes on board at 2 o'clock. Coming up at about 2.30, we will uh, talk some hockey uh, with Tom Callahan. Uh, It's been a while since we've spoke to him, and uh, we're uh, now on the other side of the trade deadline. Uh, We're closing in on the end of the hockey season, and we certainly want to talk some uh, some pucks uh, with Tom Callahan. Penguins are uh, sitting pretty right now, although you know they still uh, do have to... They still have to ma- navigate their way uh, through the schedule. They had an opportunity to uh, get two points closer to Washington on Sunday. They went to Buffalo, and the Sabres, uh, they came up and bit them. Tell you what, Buffalo's been playing some really good hockey since uh, since getting rid of their uh, head coach 
and bringing in the uh, new regime. They've been playing a lot better hockey. So we'll talk pucks with Tom Callahan coming up at 2.30. All right, lots to get to. Uh, We had some high school baseball and some high school uh, softball. uh, And, you know, every now and then, uh, and, and it seems like it's it's more. It, it goes more the the uh, the side of the hype. It just it it, it was uh, the the game itself would uh, didn't didn't reach the hype. I had to get hydrated. Sorry about that. Last night, or I should say, yesterday afternoon. Uh, the two behemoths in the All-American Conference Red Division got together, uh, Austin Town, Fitch, and Canfield. Now, Fitch was already 3-1 and one, uh, in the league. They had suffered a loss earlier on uh, to Howland, so they had already had a loss in the league. Canfield was undefeated, and there was a lot of hype going into this game. I mean, Canfield is one of the best, uh, if not the best, Division two team around here. That's going to be determined when we get into the tournaments. And Austin Town Fitch is certainly one of the better Division one teams uh, around here. Not that there's a lot of Division one programs, but certainly Austin Town Fitch is at the top of the pecking order. And a lot of folks uh, believed that, oh man, this is going to be a this is going to be an unbelievable game. Well, unfortunately for Fitch, uh, the hype really didn't uh, it didn't match the results uh canfield not only beat austin town fitch they mercy rolled them uh and it was scoreless going into the bottom of the second inning and that's when uh, canfield decided they wanted to play some baseball they put up seven runs in the bottom of the second inning and then uh, turned around after fitch got two in the top of the third uh canfield picked up eight more in the bottom of the third inning to make it 15 to 2 Canfield uh, gets the victory 15 to 3 over Austin Town Fitch. So the Canfield Cardinals are uh, just continuing to steamroll uh, in their schedule. Fitch falls to 8 and 2 on the campaign, 3 and 2 in the All-American Conference Red Tier, which it's not a bad record. Uh, and, and certainly Austin Town Fitch is is going to be a team that I believe will make some noise in Division One. Now, obviously, because we have, and I believe this to be true, three teams in Division One, uh, you're looking at not a really big representation. And when you consider the fact, and we've talked about this, uh, the one thing about the supersized tournaments when when we saw it in the fall in volleyball and we saw it in the uh, in soccer and we saw it in the winter time in boys and girls basketball and we'll see it in the spring uh, the supersized tournaments go directly to the north and I mean to tell you there are some damn good baseball teams to the north especially in division one uh, Fitch, Boardman, and Harding uh, are Division One teams, and you know uh, around here um, yeah, they're solid. Uh, around here they're solid, and and they're the three biggest schools. But you know, unfortunately, when you only have three Division One schools, uh, if you want to be able to schedule up you're going to have to go out of town and you're going to have to go take on the teams in the Canton area, in the Akron area, the Cleveland area, uh, because, frankly, there's only two other teams in Division One, including the school that you know, you're know you a fan of. So if you're a fan of Boardman, the only two teams that are Division One teams are Fitch and, How- and Harding. Now, back in the day, uh, before uh, everyone realized, hey, this doesn't make any sense because, well, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense uh, in that, uh, you know, we, we got to travel into the Canton area and whatnot. Uh, you know, the the uh, league that they were in, the old Federal League, well, the Federal League was kind of fun, except the travel got to be a little crazy. You know, you, you travel back and forth to Canton and, and travel back and forth. That's, a, you know, your good hour 
uh, both ways. That, you know, that, that takes a toll on the kids. It takes a toll on the on the studies. And let's be honest. I mean, that's that's what school is for. I mean, the the sports are just an elective. Uh, it's not a requirement. The sports, uh, that, that's not the reason why you're going to school. You're going to school to get an education. So the sports are the bonus part of this. Uh, you had to, uh, you know, you had to make sure that your kids were getting a decent decent night's sleep and, you know, an opportunity to, to open the books and, and, and do the studies. Well, when you're, when you're traveling an hour to an event and an hour back home from an event, it gets a little tough. Hence the reason why the Federal League experience, experiment, I should say, didn't really last all that long. So, unfortunately... For Fitch and Boardman and Harding, and, and look, I mean, they have a nice league when you include Howland and Canfield, and it would be a nicer league. And I wish that, you know, the Steel Valley Conference and the All American Conference would merge because I think that, you know, adding Mooney, adding Ursland, adding East, adding Cheney would be terrific, and I think it would be a, it would be a slam dunk for everyone. Uh, unfortunately, uh, right now it's not happening, but still you would have to take on uh, some teams that are the same size as you. Uh, you know, at some point in time, you should probably uh, go or uh, try to invite as many uh, Akron-based, Canton-based, Cleveland-based teams uh, down to uh, uh, down to the Valley. And, and you go up uh, or across to Canton, Akron, and up to Cleveland. Uh, to take on some teams along with your along with your uh, conference schedule, but you know, unfortunately for Fitch, yeah, eight and two, fantastic record. Do I think Fitch has what it takes in a supersized district tournament? It's going to be tough. I'm going to be honest with you. It's going to be tough. It's you know, the, it, again, the talent is incredible to the north of us, and, and I think that's much like in basketball. And, and Boardman had a fantastic year, but. It's like in basketball, uh, when you go up against uh, some talent from outside the area in Division One, we we've kind of struggled. Uh, so, I, you know, I don't know what to uh, I don't know what to read into this. I hope that um, that uh, Fitch is going to be able to bounce back. Uh, that the second game is going to be played at Fitch today. And, and thankfully, it's going to be played today and, and uh, not tomorrow because, you know, spoiler alert, you're probably not going to be playing much baseball tomorrow What with snow on the ground and all. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that uh, later on in the, in the show. But, yeah, getting back to the, the whole uh, we hype a game up and the hype, uh, the game doesn't live up to the hype. This, this one is, unfortunately... Uh, it falls into that category. Uh, a lot of us uh, were hyping this game, hoping that it was going to be an absolute classic, and it wasn't. Uh, and and give all the credit to uh, to Canfield. They they hit the ball, they hit the ball, and they hit the ball some more uh, as they knocked off a a good Fitch team last night, fifteen to three. Now, what does that say about Canfield? <laughs> this just in, kids, they're pretty good. Uh, you know, I I kept track. Uh, over the span of about eight or nine years, made a comment uh, that since 2011-2012 school year, um, leading up to 2018-2019, we had more representation in the baseball state semifinals, the baseball championship game, and the state championship game, and more state champions uh, in that span than we did in football. And I think that Canfield has a really, really good shot at getting to Akron uh, to play for a state championship. I think they have a really good chance. Now, obviously, uh, when you get to the tournaments, there's luck involved. This This is not a... This is not a best of five or a best of seven series. You know, this isn't like 
uh, playoff baseball in in college. Well, not even in college. College is double elimination too. Uh, this this isn't like playoff baseball in the minor leagues or the major leagues where you get a best of three or a best of five or a best of seven. It's it's one game, and you got to get lucky. Uh, there there is luck involved in this. Believe me when I tell you there is luck involved in this. Uh, you have to be lucky in order to win a state championship in baseball. In, in any sport, in high school athletics, because you don't have a best of three or a best of five or a best of seven, and you know, you're, not gonna, you're simply not going to do that because there's no time to do that. You, you're, you're not a professional. There's no, quote, money involved in this. So it's, it, it's a little bit different. It, it's, you know, one game. Uh, and if you're not on in this one game, it sucks to be you, but you're out of the tournament. And in COVID world, uh, if your team happens to catch COVID and you have an outbreak, you're out. Sorry. Uh, now, having said that, is Canfield good enough to make a serious run and get to Akron? Absolutely, they are. There <laughs> are no two ways about it. Uh, this team is is definitely good enough to um, to get to the next level. Uh, one of the things that I'd like to see Canfield get better at, they committed three errors yesterday. It was not a clean game uh, by any stretch. The two teams combined for six errors yesterday. Uh, it was not a clean game in any way, shape, or form. Uh, Canfield's going to need to work on that. Because, again, come tournament time, Here's two things that will kill you, walks and errors. There's a reason why pitching and defense are the two greatest elements in the game of baseball come tournament time or come playoff time. Pitching and defense will win you ball games. Look at it this way, and I've made mention of this a number of times. Every time you walk someone or every time you your defense commits an error, that's an extra base runner. And then add it up. Let's say your team commits three errors and they walk five guys. You're looking at eight extra outs. So if you're playing a seven-inning game, in reality, you're giving the opponent nine and two-third innings worth of baseball to try to beat you in seven innings. And I'll take it a step further. You aren't lasting in this tournament if you're walking five and committing three errors. You won't get out of the regionals with that because the baseball's too good. It just is. It's you, you won't last with that. So come tournament time, everything needs to be buttoned up. and And that's where luck comes in. You know, if if you give up a walk, got to get a double play. Got to get someone to bounce into a double play uh, to to erase that runner, erase that mistake. Uh, you just simply have to uh, you have to play much cleaner baseball come tournament time uh, in order to get to the destination, which is Rubber Duck Stadium, Akron, Ohio. Uh, the home of the, or actually Canal Park, I beg your pardon, uh, the home of the Akron Rubber Ducks, the Indians AA affiliate, which, by the way, they'll start their season sometime next month. Uh, they're still in spring training. Uh, but they'll start their season sometime next month. All right, the other games, uh, uh, we had another uh, All-American Conference red tier uh, game. Boardman defeated Howland yesterday 6-5. to five. Boardman picks up the victory. Uh, they were down 5-1 to one going into the top of the seventh inning, and the Spartans scored five runs in the top of the seventh to pick up the victory. That is a, uh, that's a big-time theft uh, by the, Hall by the uh, Boardman Spartans as they score five in the top of the seventh inning to get a 6-5 to five victory over the Howland Tigers. Uh, good win. Uh, for the Spartans and a horrible, horrible loss uh, for the Howland Tigers who found themselves up four going into the top of the seventh inning. All they needed was three outs and they couldn't get it done. 
kudos to Boardman scoring five in the top of the seventh. And then they hung on uh, for dear life because the game was in Howland. Uh, they were able to uh, knock out Howland six to five. So Boardman steals one last night up in Howland. Uh, Lakeview a winner over Poland eight to five. That game was up in Lakeview yesterday. Mooney a winner over Warren JFK seven to three. South Range got a victory against Hubbard. South Range is five and zero oh in the um, in the uh, Northeast Eight. That's a, a great win. Uh, for the Raiders. Uh, Miko's 12 punch outs. Uh, he didn't walk anyone. South Range is a team in Division Three. They're 9-2 and two on the campaign. I'm going to be real curious to see uh, how far South Range goes. Uh, because, again, you know, uh, without Jacob Gehrig, and, and, you know, down with Tommy John surgery, and, and, and it's a terrible loss, a, a very cruel a uh, cruel blow from the baseball god, small G, because you think that, you know, this kid is in the lineup. Now, all of a sudden, you got Garrick at the one, Mikos at the two. Mikos is already looking like an ace right now, now that Garrick is out, and he's the number one starter. He looks like an ace. Uh, if Garrick was pitching and didn't have the Tommy John surgery and his and his elbow was fine, you would probably be looking at Canfield the same way. I'm sorry, you'd be looking at South Range the same way we're looking at Canfield. A prohibitive favorite to get to Akron. Uh, now, you take away the number one pitcher. And oh, by the way, he's not a bad hitter as well. Uh, South Range is still a pretty damn good team. Now, I don't know if they're a prohibitive favorite. Because uh, uh, this just in, Division Three is pretty freaking loaded. Uh, and it's going to be a lot of fun to see uh, who does what in Division Three. Because, you know, you've got a really good Columbiana team. you got a pretty good Crestview team. you got a pretty good Liberty team. you got a, uh, you know, you still have Champion. You still have a, a Springfield. And you know, there's some reasonably good talent in Division Three. Uh you know, uh, South Range will definitely be there, though. They they will uh, most definitely be there. Uh, Niles a winner over um, over Struthers, seven to four. Uh, the Red Dragons pick up a victory. Andrew Huffman uh, punches out seven walks, two in the game. Springfield picked up a Mahoning Valley Athletic Conference Scarlet Tier win. Uh, as they beat Waterloo 5-2. to two. Western Reserve getting it done against McDonald. Uh, that game was played in Berlin Center. Western Reserve jumped out to a 6 to nothing lead after two innings. Uh, so they meant business yesterday. Papa Gallo uh, picks up the victory for Western Reserve. And Champion, we made mention of Champion. Uh, Champion gets a, a victory over Liberty yesterday. Uh, they, they beat the Leopards 12-3. to three, So... You know that's a uh, that's a solid win for the Golden Flashes. So good, some some good games going on uh, in the area uh, yesterday in high school baseball. We can certainly talk about it. The MPV Vo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business three three zero eight eight six zero eight one three. That's three three zero eight eight six zero eight one three. Going to take a time out. We'll uh, talk some softball. And uh, some other uh, baseball uh, news and notes from uh, Scholastic uh, Baseball and Softball played last night. We'll get into um, we'll get into Major League Baseball as well. Uh, hit me up on the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline, 330-886-0813. We're back in a bit. Stick around. More to come. New things happen all day. Some are good. Some not so good. In today's complicated world, while you're busy working, playing, and living life, we're busy helping you make sense of the day's news. And there's only one place where it comes together with clarity, context, and accountability. It's 21 News at 6 with me, Madison Tromler, and Derek Steyer. 21 News at 6. It's what the day's news really means to you. Welcome home to a home made homier with Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. Inspiration starts at BairdBrothers.com and is turned into reality when high-quality hardwoods are delivered right to your home. 
Baird Brothers has the latest design trends. Shiplap and skinny lap interior siding. Antique oak rustic flooring. And, well, you'll find them all at BairdBrothers.com. Ordered easily. Delivered conveniently. Enjoyed comfortably. BairdBrothers.com. WRS Wealth Advisors, the area's premier wealth and retirement specialists. Located on South Avenue in Boardman. Hi, this is Jim Myers with Myers Family Insurance, your local Medicare and retirement resource. We're excited to have sports back. Whether you're on the field or cheering from the stands, sports unifies communities and brings hope for the future. We're all one team working together. At Myers Family Insurance, we know the importance of a great team. Our team continues to grow to help you with your Medicare and retirement needs. The annual election period is October 15th through December 7th. Now's the time to make sure your plan continues to meet your needs for the upcoming year. Call today. Hi, I'm Colin Chupa. And I'm Kelsey Clem from K-Squared Marketing. Our boutique marketing firm specializes in media planning and buying, public relations, event marketing strategies, and strategic sponsorships. We can integrate our services with your existing game plan, or we can be your entire marketing team. Your goals, our game plan. Let's, Let's win, win together. together. Call K-Squared Marketing at 330-623-2730 or visit ksquared.marketing to learn more. Chevrolet. Hubbard can help you get the financing you need regardless of your situation. I'm Tony Pache and I've helped thousands of customers in Northeast Ohio and Western Pennsylvania buy a vehicle. Bad credit, no credit, no problem. I can get you approved for a low interest loan and maybe even a low payment lease on a new car at the number one Chevy dealership in Trumbull County for three years in a row. Visit HubbardChevy.com to get pre-approved or come see me, Tony Pache, to get a new vehicle today. Remember folks, Hubbard can help. Welcome back to a Tuesday edition of Running Points. Ron Potesta with you. The MPV Vo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business. 330-886-0813. That's 330-886-0813. Uh, Anthony and I mentioned about this uh, yesterday. Mark Franken and Jeff Betos were up in uh, Akron. Uh, broadcasting the uh, Columbiana-Lisbon game. It was an EOAC game uh, played at Canal Park where the uh, state semifinals and the state championship games, divisions one through four, uh, will be played. And on a personal note, that's probably the best ballpark to play them in. You know, I, I will say this. Huntington Park is a gorgeous facility it is a nightmare for broadcasters. Uh, it's, it's not a good stadium for the broadcaster. Not at all. Because uh, they have you outside, uh, albeit it's, um, they don't have you in a, in a booth per se. Uh, they have you outside. Now, uh, you do have the upper deck um, to make sure that you're not getting hammered with rain. And the only... The only time you really do get hammered with rain is if the wind is blowing really hard, uh, whether it's blowing out or blowing in, uh, the, the water will, the rain will definitely get to you. Uh, but, but it's not a good place to broadcast a game simply because, you know, especially with the minor leagues, you have game notes and you, you know, the most broadcasters are in a booth where they can tape up the game notes where they're right there. So, you know, let's, let's say that, um, you know, I, I'm broadcasting a game and, and the person hitting, uh, there was something in the game notes about him. I can certainly look over to, to where my game notes are taped up and I can read what this guy has been up to, uh, a quirk about his uh, career. Maybe he was a, uh, maybe it was a 45th uh, round draft pick uh, back in some obscure year playing for some obscure college or maybe he did something uh, quite obscure uh, in in his earlier 
career, whether it be high school, college, or whatever. It, you see that stuff in game notes, and, and, and broadcasters like to tape up the game notes, so they have the, the game notes right there, so we can you know, take a look at them. You don't want everything on on the table, uh, because the table's really not all that big, and you got your equipment on the table, and it kind of gets to be a little congested. A lot of traffic on the table. So that's why you like to put the game notes and whatnot, tape them up on, on the uh, wall or tape them up on the window, uh, which separates you from the 99 times out of 100, the other broadcaster. Uh, they don't have that in Columbus. Uh, it's gorgeous stadium, just a nightmare for the broadcaster. Uh, the broadcaster in Akron, uh, you have a booth, and you have plenty of room to... Put your game notes up on the wall or whatever, and, and you can you know broadcast the game. And that's exactly what Mark and uh, Jeff did on Sunday. Now, I don't think they had any game notes. I mean, <laughs> I don't think anybody uh, has uh, is, is in charge of writing game notes for high school baseball these days. But uh, Columbiana did beat uh, Lisbon in an EOAC game. Uh, Columbiana now 6-0 and in the EOAC. Lisbon is 5-1. and uh, believe it or not, Lisbon is below 500. Uh, they have gone 0 and 5 outside of the league, where um, uh, Columbiana is 2 and 4 outside of the league. Pretty much tells you the strength of the league. No, no disrespect, but it is what it is. Uh, the uh, the strength of the league, not so much when these two teams are going out of the league and they're below 500. Uh, be that as it may, Columbiana now a um, one game lead on Lisbon in the EOAC. Those two teams are supposed to be playing again. And I, I want to say tonight or tomorrow, and hopefully it's tonight. Because like I said, there's a pretty good chance nobody's playing uh, tomorrow, especially if the if the snow is actually as, as, uh, as much as the uh, weather forecasters are predicting. Although in Columbiana County, it's got like a trace of snow. Uh, and that can be melted off. You know, with a decent day, that can be melted off. All right, softball action. Uh, Boardman knocked off Howland uh, in six innings. They mercy rolled them 12-2. Uh, to two. Poland got a victory over Lakeview, and they had to earn it because, <laughs> tell you what, uh, Lakeview was playing some really good softball. Uh, they, they were playing some... Some very very good softball. They had a um, eight to six lead uh, going into the top of the seventh inning, and then Poland struck for uh, five times in the uh, in the top half of inning number seven, and they get a uh, a victory over Lakeview eleven to eight. So uh, Poland continues to be undefeated in the Northeast Eight South Range shut out Hubbard. In five innings, thirteen to nothing. Hubbard only had one loss in the league, uh, and South Range, who was swept by Poland, they had two losses in the leagues. Well, now uh, uh, South Range and Hubbard are in a tie for second place, two games uh, in back of undefeated Poland, who looks to be now in in complete control in the Northeast State. Uh, Bree Kohler pitching the two-hit shutouts as uh, South Range got it done in five innings. Fitch defeated Canfield 11-1. to Canfield picked up one run on one hit. That was the home run uh, by Bridget Kelly. Uh, and that was, uh, that was in the bottom of the fourth inning. That was the only hit and the only run given up by Lydia Spaulding, who uh, punched out seven and walked one. Uh, as Fitch put up crooked numbers in two of the first three innings. They had a 7 nothing lead uh, after three innings. They tacked on four more in the uh, top of the sixth inning, and they got the job done 11-1. to one. Uh, They played six innings, 10-run mercy rule uh, in that game. Lowellville defeated uh, Camel in five innings, 13-1. to one. Springfield gets a two-hit shutout uh, from... Uh, from Haley McCalla, 16 punch outs in the uh, in the victory for Springfield. 
uh, as they beat Waterloo last night three to nothing. Jackson Milton, a five inning mercy roll victory over Mineral Ridge, eleven to one. McDonald, a five inning uh, mercy roll victory over uh, Western Reserve. Bree Callow, eleven punch outs, one walk, uh, a no hitter. The one walk was the uh, the difference between. Uh, Another uh, perfect game for Bree Callow, but she does get another uh, no hitter. So I believe that is the third no hitter thrown by Callow this year. Two perfect games, three no hitters. Yeah, she's pretty solid. Uh, McDonald seven and zero in the Mahoning Valley Athletic Conference Scarlet tier. Uh, they are eleven and I, I beg I beg your pardon nine and two uh, overall. Lisbon scored four times in the bottom of the seventh inning to upset Columbiana 7-6. to six. Uh, Lisbon looks really, really uh, solid in the EOAC. That'll be a, uh, that, that'll be a very, very good victory uh, for the uh, Lisbon Blue Devils. Uh, champion got a 23 to nothing victory. Uh, Emma Gamont's uh, 12 strikeouts, two walks, just one hit allowed. Uh, champions undefeated in the uh, MVAC gray tier. They're three and zero. They are now uh, six and five overall. And and we made mention of this yesterday when Anthony was here, and he's more of the softball expert. Uh, but certainly, Champion is a team that will undoubtedly be a very high seed in Division Three, based upon the fact that they have played a who's who of high school softball teams. But I'm not so sure that they get out of the district. Uh, there are two teams that right now, for my money, uh, the two teams that are the two best teams, at least in our area, uh, and and obviously we're going to be including some uh, some teams to the north of here, uh, but in our area at least, um, Ursuline and South Range right now are playing better softball. Now that's right now. One thing I know about Champion, and one thing I definitely know about Cheryl Weaver, uh, the team gets a whole lot better as we go further and further down the road in this the regular season and get ready for the postseason. I have no doubt that champion will be a serious contender to win a district championship and go on into the regionals. But as Anthony and I made mention a couple of days ago, this is not the champion team that was a slam dunk. And I, and I think that, and, and I, I, not just going to speak on champion i'm going to speak on any team that in 2019 had a lot of juniors and seniors uh that were playing and you didn't have a lot of freshmen and sophomores playing in varsity ball the teams that and, and I'm, I believe this to be true. And, and obviously now we're over halfway through the, the baseball and the softball season. So I think that it's going to start balancing itself out. But there are teams that got off to a horrendous start, mainly because the last time we played baseball or softball, teams that fielded, predominantly juniors and seniors i would make i, I would make a, uh, a a wager that those teams are struggling or at least got off to a slower start than the teams that in 2019 were playing sophomores and freshmen and i say this because if you throw out the 2020 campaign and we did because of covid unfortunately the senior class in 2019, well, they, they graduated in 2019. They, you know, they're done. The juniors became seniors in 2020. That class didn't have a senior year. They're done. So now you're understanding the argument that I have here. 
teams that had a young, young team in 2019 filled with sophomores and freshmen, well, those sophomores and freshmen are now seniors and juniors. And I think that those teams that were really, really young in 2019, I think those teams predominantly got off to better starts. They weren't really affected that much. If you if you look at the teams that were a heavy junior and senior laden team in 2019, you're starting over again in 2021. Well, you are. You're starting over again. Because if you played a bunch of juniors and seniors, uh, where's the varsity experience for the juniors and seniors in the class of 2021? You have none. If you weren't playing freshmen and sophomores in your varsity program in 2019, I got news for you. You didn't have any varsity experience in 2021. Because, again, the 2020 season was eliminated. Now, now, let me preface all of this once again by saying we're now on the other half of the season. We, we've already completed about half of the baseball and half of the softball season. So now this isn't necessarily a, quote, excuse, which it isn't. It's a reality. But I think now teams that didn't have freshmen and sophomores predominantly or didn't have many freshmen and sophomores playing in 2019 on their varsity teams now they're starting to get a little bit further up to speed that 2020 campaign that that, that was lost it hurt the veteran clubs the teams that were relying on upperclassmen far more than it did in in 2019, I should say. That loss in 2020 hurt a great deal more for the teams that were junior and senior laden heavy in 2019 in their varsity programs than it did for the younger uh, programs. Programs that were, quote, rebuilding because those rebuilding teams coming into 2021, those kids had a lot more varsity experience than any of the other, quote, power teams that had really good upperclassmen leadership. And I think Champion falls into this, unfortunately. Champion in 2019 was a very heavy junior and senior laden team. And unfortunately, you know, the senior class is gone. The junior class is gone because they didn't have their senior year. And how many freshmen and sophomores played varsity ball? Not many. And I think it's showing early on in the campaign. I think that lack of experience is showing. So programs like Champion, yeah. yeah. Uh, any program that was a upper-class-laden team in 2019... I would be willing to bet most of those teams have struggled. Most of those teams. Now, it's not a. It's not an exact science. Obviously, you have travel ball, which is the great equalizer in the summertime, and you, and in baseball, you have B league baseball. And hell, one of the reasons why Canfield is one of the best teams in this area, a lot of their kids are playing B ball, whether it be little B, sixteen U uh, B. Well, I'm sorry. 14UB, little b, which is 16U, or big b, which is 18U. Canfield's got a lot of kids playing in B-League. And that's one of the reasons why Canfield is ridiculously good. Uh, but again, champion, uh, they'll be heard from. There, there's no question they'll be heard from. Look, they, uh, I have no doubt they'll make a uh, they'll make a significant run to try to win a, a district championship but right now and, and again the season doesn't end right now the tournaments don't begin right now uh, but right now best teams in my mind in division three Ursula and south range in softball 
Uh, those are the two best teams. And Champion is uh, is third right now. And, and uh, look, they'll be heard from. Believe me, they'll be heard from. But there's another team that uh, they're going to have to deal with in their own division, and that would be Crestview. Uh, they picked up a nice victory over LeBray, scored a run in the bottom of the seventh inning. I uh, got a five to four victory. Rebels are nine and four in the campaign. More importantly, Crestview six and one in the uh, in the gray tier. Uh, this is a this is a fun program. Uh, they will um, they'll challenge Champion. I, I, mean, I don't know if they're going to be able to beat Champion. I mean, Champion is a that's a cut above, but that that will certainly be an interesting test. Uh, make no mistake about that. Uh, Kaylee Sutton, uh, four punch outs, two walks. Uh, they get the victory. Again, the uh, Rebels got uh, two RBI from Brubaker. Uh, they scored three in the bottom of the third inning with the game tied at four. They scored a run in the bottom of the seventh. LeBray had four errors, and, and, and we made mention of this. Come tournament time, uh, you know, equate errors and walks to extra base runners. And those things add up. Like I said, and we'll we'll repeat this. Uh, come tournament time, it's 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 luck. It's luck, and what you do on the mound and what you do on defense is going to have a lot to do with how well your team does come tournament time, because you cannot allow base runners who have gotten on base because of a walk or an error those are outs those are free runners and we made mention of this earlier I'll, I'll use an arbitrary number five walks three errors that's eight extra base runners that's eight potential outs that you've given away you've given those outs away so the reality is you might have played seven innings. In a, in a seven-inning game, you might have played seven innings. But in reality, you gave your opponent nine and two-thirds innings worth of extra outs. You, including the extra outs in the seven innings that you played, the 21 outs in a seven-inning game, plus the extra runners that you gave your opponent eight base runners five walks three errors eight base runners equates to two and two third innings worth of outs so essentially your seven inning game just became nine and two third innings that's why come playoff time you got to keep the walks to a minimum and you got to keep the errors to a minimum. Otherwise, you ain't winning a state title. It's just not going to happen. You got to play clean baseball. And clean baseball is no errors in the field and as few walks as possible. Pitch to contact, if you will. Trust your defense behind you. Same thing in softball. Pitch to contact. Strikeouts, oh, they're great. Wonderful. They're absolutely fantastic. Uh, but... You know, when when you're not getting a strikeout and, you know, a person makes contact, you got to trust your defense and hope your defense uh, plays solid, uh, you know, and you got to keep the ball in the strike zone and you can't give up walks because walks will kill you. And then the one thing, and this is probably related, uh, but this is an, another big, big, big thing and part of the luck uh, that goes along with trying to win a state championship in, in baseball or softball. And it's a cardinal rule in baseball. And I saw it when I was in minor league ball. And it's the difference between a guy that stays in the minor leagues. And I'm talking about a pitcher. A pitcher that stays in the minor leagues or a pitcher that gets past this. And even in the major leagues it happens. But the great ones don't allow this to happen. Here's it. Two outs, nobody on base. You give up a walk. Or more importantly, routine ground ball or routine fly ball that's butchered and the guy's on base. Don't let the snowflake, I'm not 
mentioning that as a bad name or anything like that. I know in the political world, everyone loves to use the term snowflake, which I think is absurd, but neither here nor there. Do not let the snowflake, the guy getting on base or the gal getting on base uh, because of an error or a walk, you can't allow that snowflake to turn into a full-blown avalanche. So part of the luck is part and this I don't even think this is luck this is more mental strength you're going to have to have a pitcher that's going to be mentally strong enough to say okay this guy or gal getting on base because of an error because of a walk something that I did a walk or something that one of my teammates did not fielding a ground ball not catching a fly ball forget about it I'm going to pick my teammate up if this is an error and I'm going to get the last out and that'll be the end of it nip it in the bud If it's on me, I walk this guy. Okay, I cannot let this walk define my inning. I got to go out and I got to finish my job and get us back into the dugout. And you see it in all forms of baseball. Two outs, nobody on base. Error or a walk. And a friggin' roof. Whoosh. Just caves in. There's a base hit. There's another base hit. Well, there's a walk. There's a home run. There's three or four runs scored. And all of this happened with two outs. And all of this happened because some schlub got a walk or somebody on defense butchered a ground ball or dropped a fly ball. You want to win a state championship in baseball or softball? Can't allow that to happen either. Got to be mentally strong. That's it. I mean, it's just, it, it's come tournament time, and, and these kids know it. And all hell, all the, everyone knows it. Come tournament time. Man, it's the, it's the best time of the year. Uh, tournament time in any sport is the single best time of the year because you, you know that there is everything on the line. All right, you want your season to continue? Go win this game. Uh, you want to have your dream alive to uh, go to a regional tournament? Yeah, you got to get through this team to win a district championship. And then if you win this game, you still got to win two more games against much better opponents in order to get to Akron. Good luck to you. <laughs> That's the best part, man. I'm telling you, it, it is the best time, uh, whether it's baseball, softball, uh, come playoff time in football, basketball. Whatever sport, the playoffs, the high school tournament, it is the single greatest time. Uh, I love the tournaments. And I love the fact that everyone gets to go into the tournaments in in basketball and and, uh, baseball and all the other sports, with the exception of football. Football is a little bit different. You got to earn your way uh, into the tournament. Now, last year was a little different because last year, you know, we had the pandemic. Uh, So you had a six-game regular season, and okay, everyone gets into the tournament. If you don't want to be in the tournament and you want to play four games just to get your kids to play a 10-game season, have at it. Uh, But everyone, if if you want to go into this tournament, you can be in this tournament. And I thought it was great. And I'll tell you this, and you know, I haven't spoke to Tim Street in a while, and we're we're probably well overdue to get him on the uh, get him on the horn. And I don't think it's going to happen this year. I, I think that, that um, the OHSAA is bound and determined to go top 12 teams in each region. And I'm not in favor of that because you're going to have a bye week for the top four seeds, which I think is absurd. Uh, you don't want a bye week. You know, when we had uh, the formula last year, and we had all these coaches that we spoke to, say, hey, what do you think of the bye week? We hate it. It just it takes all the momentum away. It it's it it, it allows the the players and the team to be stale for a week. That's bye weeks are no not in the tournaments. Hell no, not in the tournaments. You don't do a, a, a bye week in a tournament. That's terrible. And it's bad enough they do it in the NFL. No, and I know it's everyone sits back. Well, you know how many one number one seeds have gone on to win the Super Bowl? Okay, I get it. I understand that, but, you know, I mean, how many wildcard teams have gone on 
uh, to go into the Super Bowl. And it's, you know, it there's there's a few, there's a handful. Uh, it's high school sports or high school. Eh, I, I'm not I'm not wild on a uh, on a bye week. Uh, if you wanted to go to to make the next step up, you should have gone to 16, which I think eight is more than enough. Now the other thing, um, and I think the OHSAA. Uh, is going to consider this. I mean, I listen, I haven't spoke to Tim Street in a while, so I don't have any knowledge of this. But I'm a reasonably intelligent person. Actually, it's more than reasonably intelligent. I'm pretty damn smart when it comes to the sports. And when it comes to this, I'm sorry, this and sports. Pretty damn smart when it comes to that. Don't think for a second that the OHSAA didn't look at what they did last year and the amount of money that came in last year and the amount of money that would really come in in a normal, healthy, COVID-free world. Don't think for a second that the OHSAA didn't look at last year and say, or at least think, you know, if we limited the regular season to eight games and had everyone go into the playoffs and kept the money like we do in our playoffs we would make a ridiculous amount of money. Don't think for a second they haven't thought that. Because I'm going to guarantee you they have. And I'm going to guarantee you someone in Columbus has probably thought, hey, um, in a healthy COVID-free world, do you guys understand how much money you can make if you opened up the entire state for everyone to be in the postseason, have the same formula, except we're going to go six to eight games. And because we can do this, because, well, last year uh, the the season ended uh, before Thanksgiving. If you remember, football season ended before Thanksgiving. If you were to do eight-game playoffs, Eight games, and everyone gets into the postseason. Your season would be over the second weekend in December. The same time the season normally ends. Second weekend in December. First, second weekend in December. Don't think for a second that the OHSAA hasn't at least thought about, and they're not going to do it this year, But don't think for a second that people haven't thought, and maybe that word is starting to infiltrate a little bit more. Hey, um, guys, you realize when we get back to normalcy, because we are, you know, we're going to get back to normalcy. It's look, people, most most Americans are going to be vaccinated, and this is going to be. I hate to say it. Everyone is probably going to have to be, or or let me back up. Everyone's going to be suggested, much like the flu vaccine in the flu season. There will be a suggestion at some point in time where everyone's going to say, "Hey, um, you know, COVID is still around." Uh, we're going to need you guys or anyone who wants to be vaccinated. We're going to have to have you do it yearly and you're going to have to do a yearly COVID vaccination, much like the flu vaccination. And, and I'm sure people are aware every year of the flu shots, well, it'll be a COVID shot. That's, that's, that's essentially what's going to happen. So in a sports, in the sports theme of this, everything's going to be fine. You know, we're going to get on the other side of this. Now, I don't know how long it's going to take, but we're going to get on the other side of this. And the point in all of this is when we get on the other side of this, 
don't think for a second the OHSAA hasn't thought of, you know, um, if we did this, invited everyone to play in the playoffs, every region, seed them up and down, one's going to play 24, two's going to play 20, and so on and so on and so on. You know? I think we could make a really good killing here. Because you got to remember, in a normal season, you're not talking about 10 or 15% of capacity or 1,500 people. You're not talking about a small amount of people attending this game. And you're not talking about the same people that can't go to the game spending, you know, spending money to try to see the game you you know it's there are gonna be a lot of people watching games when we get back to normal when we get back to normal the stadiums are going to be filled like they've or reasonably filled like like it was before covid so keep all of that in mind uh, when the ohsaa looks at this and says we could make a killing if we shorten the season to eight games and had everybody play in the tournament. And if you don't want to play in the tournament, that's fine. You know, you can play your two games, two non-tournament, you know, two non-tournament games and, and keep it in your regular season if you want to. And those that get eliminated in the first round Okay, uh, you've played your ninth game. You played your playoff game. Now, if you want to play one more game, no problem. You can play another game against a team that was eliminated uh, in, in round one. And if you get eliminated in round two, okay, well, your season is over because you played eight regular season games and you got to the second round of the playoffs. Well, that's two more games and that's 10 games in a normal, normal, regular season. So you're 10 games, all right, you're done. And then third round, fourth round, uh, state, state semifinals, state uh, state championship, or however many rounds it is. I believe it was six or seven. Six or seven rounds. Don't think for a second the OHSAA hasn't thought of this. I'm going to guarantee you someone in Columbus has already thought about the amount of money the OHSAA could make. And let me tell you, that amount of money is insanely big. When you add into television and radio rights and the entities like YSN, you got the gate, you got the money uh, from all the other entities. Oh, Let, let me make a let me make a prediction right here, and it's not going to happen in 2021. As early as 2022, however, don't be surprised if the OHSAA says, "Hey, everyone, we're going to do eight game regular season, and everyone's going to go into the state playoffs, and we'll have, um, you know, it, you can play your ten games, but it's an eight game regular season. Uh, everyone goes to the state playoffs." And it'll be a cool idea, because I think it is. Uh, and, and it'll be a great idea for the OHSAA, because they're going to make a shit ton of money. Trust me when I tell you. Do not be a bit surprised if that happens as soon as 2022. Or as soon as we're back to normal. All right, Scotty Knox is coming up in a bit. We're going to talk some, uh, we're going to continue our talk on some uh, high school baseball and uh, we'll uh, talk about the uh, the state of the game in general. A uh, former minor leaguer, and uh, he has given back to the community in a big, big way. Scotty Knox coming up next. Stick around. More to come. 
Hello, I'm Greg Burbick with G. Burbick Farms. For the last hundred years, my family has farmed in Columbiana and Mahoning counties. I began raising cattle in 1996 with the goal of providing a better product for you and your family on the dinner table. Our grass-fed and grain-supplemented black Angus beef were raised with no hormones, steroids, or antibiotics. We are known for our hometown-friendly service and incredible tasting products. We are locally owned and have customers across the tri-state area. Our products go from our farm to your family. Stop by our farm on New Buffalo Road or visit us on the web at gburbickfarms.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. G. Burbick Farms, it just tastes better. Hi, this is Tommy Clem, owner of WRS Insurance Solutions. WRS Insurance Solutions is a local, independent agency that specializes in life, Medicare, long-term care, and disability products. Call us at 330-953-3722 or visit us at wrsinsurancesolutions.com to learn more. Good luck to all the student-athletes in the Valley. Right now is a great time to get more for your trade-in at Tri-State Ford and drive home in a newer pre-owned vehicle. Choose from our great selection of new Ford models or pre-owned vehicles. Plus, get the Tri-State Ford Advantage, including a 10-year, 200,000-mile warranty and more. At Tri-State Ford, we'll pay you top dollar for your trade, but you don't have to purchase one of ours to sell us yours. Customer focus, community driven. Tri-State Ford East Liverpool or visit tristateford.net. Jimmy Sudman here, director of Isle, Purple Cat, and Golden String. We are happy to support YSN and two of my favorite people, Scotty Mincher and Super Dave O'Malley. We are an agency that provides services for adults with disabilities. We infuse humor, passion, and joy into their lives. If you know of any folks with disabilities that need our assistance, please contact us. Welcome back to a Tuesday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. Uh, joining me on this uh, beautiful Tuesday afternoon, and it's probably probably the uh, the prelude of some ugliness to come uh, tonight and tomorrow with snow in the forecast. God, Mother Nature, go home, you're drunk. Uh, joining me on the MP Vivo heating and air conditioning hotline, former minor leaguer and a guy that has given back to the community 100 fold as far as baseball is concerned uh friend of the show scott knox scotty what's going on brother how's it going pal all right it is it's going uh, it's going reasonably well i'll tell you what we I, i'm digging the baseball that we're seeing uh this year i uh i think we have a couple of teams in the area that that certainly have what it takes at least on paper uh to uh, to make a serious run in the in the upcoming tournaments Yes, I agree. Absolutely. You know, I'm looking yeah. at I'm looking at Canfield, and you know, you and I have grew up in the same era, and uh, we always had the um, games, big games that were hyped up, and and uh, very, uh, very, not very often, I should say, uh, the game lives up to the hype. And last night was. Uh, more of the same. Canfield and Fitch was hyped up, and this was a five-inning game. Canfield steamrolled him thanks to a seven-run second and an eight-run third. That, good Lord, is Canfield a good baseball team? Yeah, Canfield is playing really well right now. They're they're kind of getting everything they need. Pitching and defense has been solid. They're swinging the bats really well, and they're you know they they've got off to a great start, and um, you know they they jumped on. They jumped on Fitch last night, and, and obviously, you know, you put seven up in the second, and then come right back and put multiple runs up in the third. You know that that's gonna that's gonna put you in a pretty good situation. But yeah, Canfield's out to a great start in Division Two, and then obviously you have South Range sitting there in Division Three, uh, who I think could make another deep run. Um, those would be the two teams that jump out right away as far as possibly making a deep run. You know, in the high school playoffs. Yeah, and, and Division Three is going to be absolutely loaded. I mean, when you consider 
Uh, you got Springfield in Division Three. You've got Champion in Division Three. Crestview, uh, Columbiana. Uh, you know, and, and you're a graduate of Columbiana. You and you played for one of those two teams that that went to Columbus. Uh, and and Columbiana is off to a reasonably good start this year. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. And, and again, uh, you know, that Division Three is is really up and down. I mean, obviously South Range. I think locally is the, the, the team that stands out a little bit, but we all know that one day, that one day you don't pitch and catch and you're into the fifth, sixth, seventh inning and it's a one, one game. And all of a sudden you're staring at each other and whoever, whoever makes that little drop, whoever doesn't turn that double play, um, you know, it's going to cost you in a two, one type of game. And uh, you know, you move on or move out. You know, that's, that's the thing about baseball. It can happen uh, at any time any time during that run yeah and this is why i think high school baseball it is so so difficult and, and all sports in high school because it's it's not a best of three or a best of five or or a best of seven it's one it's a one game tournament and you know this isn't like minor league or or, or major league baseball where uh you have a really better chance at getting the best team win scenario uh you know you got to have some luck in high school athletics, in any sport, you got to have some luck along the way. Oh, no, no question. And, and I mean, you know, when you're talking about that, Poe, I can think back. You know, I, I was really fortunate when I was coaching high school baseball at um, at Boardman and uh, at Columbia and also at Cortland Maplewood when I started out. Um, you know, I can think about the teams that were we, we had really good kids, really good teams that we get into a regional or a district championship and we had one of those days where we, we, we made the wrong drop at the wrong time. Uh, whereas the year before, um, you know, we had, a, again, both teams are really good teams, but, you know, we, we, we made all the catches, the ball bounced the right way, and, you know, we were able to advance. So, you know, you can go back through and it's just, it's baseball is just crazy with that. Uh, no question. And, you know, I made mention of this a couple of times and, yeah, you know, I I look at the game in a weird way. I suppose uh, you look at the errors and the amount of walks, and those are free outs that you've just given away. And and over the course of a game, let's say you give up five uh, five walks and three errors. Well, that's two and two third innings worth of outs. So while you might have played a seven inning game. In reality, you gave your opponent nine and two-third innings worth of baseball to try to catch you and beat you. Yeah, and, and, and you know, at the end of every game, you know, we, we used to take, you know, I used to take the scorebook, and I said, look, the only thing I want to know is how many walks we had, how many errors we had, how many of those walks scored, how many unearned runs we gave up. And 90, 98% of the time, you don't even need to get to run scored and hits because – I, we always tell our teams we'll lose more games than we win or than somebody beats us because we didn't catch it. First of all, you, you can't walk because 75% of all walks score. So when you put a guy on, he's going to score 75% of the time. And uh, it just, it comes straight down. You got to pitch it and catch it. And if you can pitch it and catch it, and then you make contact offensively and make that other team field and, and catch and throw the ball. It's amazing. Uh, how much success you can have. It, it, it just really simplifies it. Well, and, and you just brought up something that uh, it, it's it's bothered me to no end uh, in the major league level, and that is the fact that strikeouts have become now uh, where it was an ego thing uh, back in the day. You, you didn't strike out because it's it's a terrible look. Uh, it's now become acceptable. And and the the thing that I don't like is what you just brought up. If you make contact, now in the major leagues, there's a 98, 99% chance that you're going to get thrown out. But there's a 100% chance you're, you're getting your butt back into the dugout uh, having struck out. You're, there's a 100% chance that you're going back into the dugouts uh, having not done anything uh, other than strike out. Uh, but if you make contact, uh, you can at least move a runner over or make something happen due to a deficiency on defense. Yeah. And, and again, you know, we, we used to keep a stat with called quality outs. Look, you can make it out, but let's, let's advance the runner. 
you know, let's do something productively. But the one thing you cannot do is strike out. And, and for the sake of me, uh, up in the major league level, you know, guys, now you talk about this ridiculous launch angle, lift the ball, hit the ball in the air. And then you got these nine and 10 year old kids going out trying to lift the ball in the air because they're hearing this launch angle crap. Uh, I mean, it's, it's utterly ridiculous. It comes right back to, uh, hit the ball hard, drive the ball, put the ball in play. And as soon as that ball's between the lines, it forces the other team to not only have to catch it, but they have to throw it and the other uh, part, uh, teammate has to catch it. It's amazing what happens when that ball starts flying around. Scott, why is it that high school baseball is played, and, and to this day it's now played demonstrably different uh, than the majors? You're You're seeing a... The game being played now in the high school level is the game that we used to see played in Major League Baseball where it was small ball, but you could still have guys that can that can rope the ball. And obviously home runs are, have never been a, a big, big thing in high school baseball, but hard hit balls have always been a product of, of, of high school baseball. It, the, the game itself on the high school level, it seems – and I, I, I hate to say this, but I think it's true. The high school game, when it's a clean game, is more watchable than than watching uh, the strikeouts. Oh, oh, there's no question. I, if you gave me a choice, uh, you, you get two really solid teams that are playing clean at the high school level. Um, I, I can sit and watch that all night long. This stuff, this big league base, pro, pro baseball and stuff on TV now. This this you know this launch angle striking out uh, oh it's about the home runs uh, I mean it it's it's it just and again I use the word sickening because it's hard to watch I mean it really is it's hard to watch. Well, I'm going to ask you a question and I, I brought this up uh, to a number of coaches and and obviously we we don't know how much. Uh, how much damage was done by not playing in in the uh, in the spring of 2020 because of COVID? Uh, but but I've made the comment that teams that played in 2019 that had a upper class uh, uh, varsity team, I, I I'm willing to 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 gamble and say that most of those teams got off to a slow start in 2021 because i mean let's let's be honest i mean the the seniors of 2019 well they're already gone the the juniors of the class of 2020 well they're gone too so essentially you're starting all over again uh as do you think along the same way do you think that the the teams that were quote young in 2019 are uh, came into this season better uh, or at least more prepared to play baseball in 2021 yeah, and, and it's all about the reps. And, and again, it's it's one of those things, and in baseball, where it's an everyday game, you know, because you don't have the, the physical contact, such as in football, where, you know, you, you got to take a week off, heal up, and be ready to go again. But in baseball, being it's such a, a, a highly skilled, uh, highly skilled game as far as an everyday game, as far as your, your reps, uh, your younger players um, that were able to get reps. Uh, somewhat the year before can come into this and, and rebound a little bit quicker. And then obviously being able to get a few reps in the summer, they were able to salvage some, some of that in the summer and then coming back and applying it. At least they were able to get something, obviously the upperclassmen um, that's going to hit a little bit harder. The seniors were out. Uh, they were out of the picture totally. And then, and then obviously, you know, you're coming back with the younger player. So yeah, I think, I think teams that, that played younger underclassmen, sophomores, juniors, um, will probably be a little bit further ahead, and especially if they were able to get anything out of the summer coming into this high school season. And then you look at Canfield, and I think one of the reasons why Canfield is so loaded, uh, I I do some umpiring over in B-League. There's a lot of kids from Canfield that are playing in B-League. And, and when you get that quality type of baseball, whether it be 14U, 16U or 18U, uh, you you take it back to your school. Yeah, there's a reason why Canfield is pretty much loaded this year. 
Yeah, and, 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 and again, getting reps in the B League or getting reps with a local travel team or even guys that you got a few guys that will go outside on travel teams, as long as, as, long as they're getting the reps in, um, you know, that's going to be the big thing. And, and the, more, the, more, uh, the more you can do that, uh, the, the more that uh, it's going to help you. And, and, again, now that you've kind of opened that door up, you know, I'll, I'll use a team as an example in the, in the uh, Maslin area. Maslin Jackson, Division One, who's kind of set the bar in the last, I'd say, five to seven years, uh, Coach Gamble, you know, what, what they've done, and, and this is something that, again, that I've been kind of preaching in this area, but, but no high school team or program has, has kind of really taken advantage as, as of yet. What Maslin Jackson does is they take all their underclassmen and they put them together and they play in the summer because by Ohio high school rules, you can do that between June 1st and July 31st. You can play all of your kids together and you can get a guy that's not been on your high school coaching staff or a few guys to go ahead and coach that team in the summer. You obviously supervise it as a high school coach, and you, you basically get another full high school season in in the summer. You'll play some games during the week, and then you can go to tournaments on weekends. And what Maslin Jackson has done is they've been able to get an extra season in of high school with their guys playing together if I'm a senior right now at Maslin Jackson, as soon as this high school season's over, I do not come back and play on that team. I'm able to go out and play wherever I want to because I graduate. But anybody coming back as an underclassman is going to play on the Maslin Jackson summer team. And can you imagine what that does? You have your two middle infielders that are sophomores or juniors that are coming back, and now they're going to play all summer together, and then they get to play – in, in that same system being taught the same thing. So essentially a kid that goes through a Maslow and Jackson high school uh, in a career, instead of getting four years, they could get up to seven or eight years, depending. It's incredible. Now this, I mean, this begs to ask, why haven't anyone jumped on this? Why, why um, hasn't a program well, around here jumped on that and said, uh, wait a second, Maslin Jackson is winning state championships and they're <laughs> using essentially Scott, what they're doing is, in, in basketball terms, open gym, except they're they're playing uh, a schedule. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, this is a this is an absolute genius move. Well, here, and here, and, 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 and to be honest with you, Paul, I'm just gonna, and, and, and you know me, I call a spade a spade. The the couple of reasons why nobody has done it around here. First of all, it takes time and it takes work. And high school baseball coaches. Uh, for the majority of the fact is they're, they're, you know, they're, they're teachers. They're doing other things in the summer. Obviously they're spending their time with their family. I get all that. But if you're a guy in this area that wants to take your program possibly to the next level, which Maslin and Jackson has done, then that's one of the things that, that, that again, you can do. Nobody has been able to do that. Um, and again, it comes back to time, effort, and organization. And it takes time. It takes effort. You're organizing it. But again, um, you know, that's one of those things where if you if you really want to get your program possibly to the next level, that's something that um, you know it's an investment in time and effort. But hey, it is what it is, and, and it, it, it speaks volumes of what Maslin Jackson has been able to do. Well, back when we were younger, uh, and, and let's be honest, uh, Columbiana County, not many kids went to the B League. I know you did, but uh, not many kids in Columbiana County were uh, were going to the B League at that time. And this was a few years back, I don't know, more than a few years, but neither here nor there. But we had a lot of kids playing 15 to 18-year-old baseball, and essentially it was our school uh, playing uh, playing a summer league. Now, unfortunately, you know, when I was growing up, we didn't have high school baseball in Letonia, but the concept was there where we had a, a ridiculous amount of kids playing baseball. I, that's a head scratcher why teams around here wouldn't wouldn't want to do that because I think it's a, a again, I think it's a stroke of genius if you think about it. It's an opportunity to give these kids the chance to, to play together uh, for an entire summer uh, season and, more importantly, get everyone's chemistry ready to go again when you're playing baseball again the next spring. 
No, no question. And again, look, and I get it. I mean, as, as a high school player in the area, I mean, you have friends in other schools and in the summer, you know, you, 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 you know, let's say you guys play on the same team. That's fun. And, and that's a blast. I get all that. Okay. I did that as a player. Um, I did that as a coach, you know, you get, you kind of put an all-star team together, but again, if I'm a high school coach running a program at the highest level, then, you know, th that's something that you got to take a serious look at and, and try to organize that. And again, it, it's a lot of time. It's a lot of effort. Now you can't coach it. Now you can coach it for 10 days. You're allowed up to 10 days between that June 1st and July 31st. So if I'm, if I'm a coach on the coaching staff, um, I can spend 10 days actually either instructing, coaching, or being directly involved. But other than those 10 days, then somebody else has to be on there that's not, that's not been on the coaching staff. But that, that's pretty easy. You know, you, I, I can think of a million guys that, that you know, we could get to do that if, if, if it's in your school district. But beside the point, it, it's amazing that if you can put your, all your guys together and, and you get an extra high school season and how much, I mean, that's just going to, and it's by, by it's legal. Uh, Paul, the OHSAA used to only allow no more than four guys per school district per roster, but now they allow your whole team. Scott Knox joining me on the MP Vivo heating and air conditioning hotline. I, I'm going to be real curious to hear your opinion on this. Uh, the Mahoning Valley Scrappers uh, lost the New York Penn League when Major League Baseball decided to get rid of that level of baseball. Uh, but the Scrappers were very fortunate in that they are now part of the inaugural campaign of the Major League Baseball Draft League. This is going to be a league that is going to be encompassed of invitation-only draft-eligible kids, whether it be high school or or junior college or college eligible kids uh, the idea sounds phenomenal on paper and i think that it, it, if this is marketed correctly and if this is uh, as good as what i am envisioning uh, this is a better brand of baseball altogether than the new york penn league and i think it could be a a whole lot more fun uh, and frankly I, I think this is something major league baseball could have and should have thought of years ago Oh, I agree. I agree. It just, you know, it, it allows, it allows players to be able to get out there and, and, and have a chance to get to the next level. And I think the brand of baseball uh, and the caliber of baseball, caliber of baseball um, is going to be very good. No question about it. I mean, I think it's a, I think it's a great thing. I think it's a great move. Yep. Can you okay. imagine, can, can you imagine it? And, and let's be honest. I mean, this is, this is basically uh, the underwear Olympics, AKA the combine on steroids. Because uh, you're going to be looking at a, a lot of baseball games played uh, between a bunch of kids that have aspirations of going into pro baseball and hoping to be drafted. And these kids are essentially playing for a lot of money in that they're not getting paid. But if they have a really good year, their draft stock, at least in theory, goes through the roof. And you know as well as I do there's a substantial difference between being drafted in the 10th round as opposed to being drafted in the first or second round. Oh, the, you mean the old bonus babies, folks? Oh, yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> yeah there's, there's about a five- or six-figure difference and maybe a seven-figure difference uh, in terms of, of uh, the first to the 20th round, uh, definitely a seven-figure difference. Yeah, and, and obviously guys getting picked in that first first couple rounds not only the money factor, but, you know, got, get, organizations are going to stay with you and give you a chance uh, a little bit longer. You, you know, you're, you're going to have, you know, you have a down year. Um, they got a lot of money invested into you. They're, they're going to, they're going to allow that and have a little bit more leniency than if you're drafted in the 25th round and they gave you a plane ticket and a cup of coffee, and then you have a down year. And then all of a sudden, you know, you get released and, trying to get this and trying to get that so oh yeah it's a whole different world no doubt well and, and the other part of that and, and and you've lived through this you know when a farm director gets fired and, and someone else comes in well that's someone else he didn't draft any of these kids he didn't he didn't draft uh, uh the the bonus babies or anything like that he's gonna want his own people 
You, you, I mean, you've you've lived through that. It's it's baseball in a lot of ways, wonderful sport, great sport, discriminatory as hell when it comes to the uh, when it comes to a new farm director or a new GM because they're going to want their own people, and that's going to come to the expense of of kids that uh, you know, for lack of a better term, uh, weren't in the radar of the guy that they just hired. Scott, you there? Uh oh. All right, we got to take a uh, timeout. Uh, apparently, um, uh, our uh, connection with Scott just uh, just got dropped off. We'll uh, we'll take a timeout. See if we can get him back. Three three zero eight eight six zero eight one three. The MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business. We'll take a timeout. Be back in a bit. Stick around. Uh, more of a Tuesday edition of Running Point coming up next. Your teams work hard and give it all they've got. Well, so does ours. Because 21 Sports and YSN give you extra effort when covering local sports. 21 Sports and YSN, winning coverage of our Valley's teams. No matter what the weather, be prepared with a reliable, efficient, rude gas furnace or air conditioner from MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning. Call your energy-efficient expert, MP Vivo, today for a free estimate. Here at MP Vivo, we rely on Rude, and so should you. Myers Family Insurance knows the importance of a great team. Our team continues to grow to help you with your Medicare and retirement needs. The annual election period is October 15th through December 7th. Now's the time to make sure your plan continues to meet your needs for the upcoming year. Call today. It's storm season. I think we're under the gun for some heavy storms over the next couple of hours. And Storm Tracker 21 is ready. This is probably the one we're keeping a closer eye on. On air. And locally, we're going to have a lot of eyes on our area. Online. All right, let's talk high-risk future cast and the timing of this weather. On social media and on our app. Notice we'll have scattered showers on Thursday. Stay ready with Storm Trucker 21. The severe weather threat now through around sunset. Your first and last stop with your tax return should be with me, Tracy Bryden at Greenwood Chevrolet in Austintown. No other dealer goes the extra mile to bring you the largest selection of vehicles at one convenient location. With guaranteed credit approval, I will find you the right vehicle and the right financing options for you. I am ready to go the extra mile to show you why no other dealer sells more cars, finances more, and gets you more for your refund than Greenwood Chevrolet in Austintown. Welcome back to a Tuesday edition of Running Point. I think we got our uh, connection back with uh, Scott Knox. Scott, you there? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, a couple more things before we let you go, and and uh, yep. we, we made mention, uh, you know, GM, new GM comes in, new farm director comes in, you know, the uh, the minor leaguers and the old uh, farm directors watch. Uh, they they don't have a guarantee that they're going to be back. Hell, you you may uh, see one of those kids get released for uh, one of the one of the farm directors guys. That's where baseball. Is, it's a great sport, but it's discriminatory as hell when it comes to the hirings of the farm directors and whatnot? Oh, yeah, it's it's a minefield. I mean, it, and again, you know, changing ownerships, uh, guys getting offered different situations in different organizations. Um, it, it, it can be all over the place. And, and professional sports, professional baseball, day-to-day, there's no guarantees as a player, as a farm director, um, I mean, it's just it's that, it's that up and down and inconsistent, no doubt. Scott, as we look at uh, Youngstown State uh, and, and the season that they have had, and and they're, right now they're in the top four. There's a uh, there is a pitcher, left-handed pitcher that uh, has been absolutely incredible to say the least uh, this year for the Youngstown State University Penguins, and and I'm thinking in uh, with the um, 
with the uh, uh, the draft league coming up, Colin Floyd uh, is a pitcher that could very easily get an invite uh, to the uh, to the Major League Baseball draft league, and I think it would be a huge feather in his cap uh, if he were a uh, an invite into this. Oh, no question. And again, uh, you know, up to this point, he he's just been simply lights out, and uh, um, you know. For him to be able to 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 put himself and be invited into this uh, this new league, this new setup would uh, would certainly be a benefit beneficial to him and obviously to YSU as a program. But uh, no question, you know, there, there's a perfect example of a guy um, that can step into this and really really help himself, uh, you know, as he continues to obviously move or possibly to the next level. You know, and, and we got some pretty interesting high school kids, but I, I honestly don't know if any of them could be on the level to be an invite into this league. I mean, that's how prestigious uh, this league is going to be. And the fact that Prep Baseball Report is going to be in charge of doing the invitations, uh, man, you got to be a really, really dominant player in high school baseball uh, to get the invite to be in this league. Well, yeah, and in, in high school, it's more of a projection, obviously, because you're younger. And and and, and look, you're, you're talking about a guy that uh, that has to get a local local high school player lineup out one through nine compared to um, YSU, where they're you know they got to get somebody, they got to get the four hitter from Mississippi State out, they got to get the four hitter from Wright State out, they got to get the four hitter from UIC out. And a guy that that's been able to show that in a dominant fashion in a dominant manner, obviously, um, is is much more uh, much more projectable than uh, than a high school player. But again, you know, you look at the high school player and you say, okay, arm strength, uh, where can he be in another two to three years? Uh, but again, if you're looking at what you're going to get right now, obviously, you're going to go with the guy that's been able to show that he can get that college player or that college player program that plays with a lot of professional skill uh, out. And that's, you know, that, that's the difference of the high school and the college level. Yeah, yeah. Scott, I, I look at um, and a contemporary of ours, an 81 graduate of Sebring High School, Jeff Bruni, who played a couple of years at Penn State. Uh, his kid, Gavin Bruni, my God, does this kid uh, have uh, an, an unbelievably high ceiling for, uh, for his pitching. Yes. Up Jeff Bruni. The only thing I can remember about Jeff Bruni in high school, Poe, is when we used to run the. When I was a senior, we went to the Veer option. We run the Alabama Veer option, a wishbone, and I can remember faking it to the fullback, and then I, and then I used to have to stare at him as the defensive end. He looked like Andre the Giant. I know one thing: I either cut it up inside pretty quick, or I pitched it because that's one guy you didn't want to run into. <laughs> yeah. and could you imagine he and Bum Baker uh, tagging yeah. as uh, professional wrestlers? Jesus, this, yeah. they would be uh, they would be behemoths. Oh my goodness sakes! But uh, yeah, but, but yeah, his son, yeah, absolutely, just just outstanding, outstanding, no doubt about it. Yeah, and, and it's and look, I mean, it's a different world uh, if you get drafted and you're fortunate enough to be drafted, even if you're not drafted <laughs> and you're fortunate enough to be in minor league baseball. You know, I, I've said this. Uh, it is a different, different world. You got to be insanely talented just to get into minor league baseball. Let alone, you know, you, we always talk about the pyramid of progression, and and you've you've talked a lot about this through the years. You know, as a high school kid, you want to be able to you, you want to be able to be good enough in high school where you can you can carry this to possibly be able to play college ball. And then once you get to college ball, you want to be good enough to where you're able to carry it to the next pyramid and possibly play in the pro ball. And, and then you got to start all over again and go way down on the bottom and work your way up to the major leagues. I mean, it is a ridiculously high standard to get to the major leagues and to get to minor league baseball and not accomplish the goal of major league baseball. There's no shame in that either, because it, you got to be insanely talented to be in minor league baseball. Oh, Poe, it, it's, and, and again, it's, it's insane. I, I, I can think back when you talk about progression and again, in high school, the biggest thing, and <clears throat> we always like to tell our players, look, you know, try to get as good as you can be and get your skill level 
as good as it can be and then get part of your education or maybe a lot of your education paid for at the collegiate level. And look, that can be, that doesn't have to be division one. You know, everybody gets so enamored where, Oh, I've got to go division one. Well, let me tell you something. If you're a high school player in this area and the number of guys that can step into a division one program and start, uh, that's really, really tough to do. So, Division two, Division three, NAIA, and then my biggest, and it's the, and, and I keep going back. This is the route I went. Junior college, junior college out of high school. It's a two year thing. Uh, they give scholarships, and I was fortunate enough to go to Florida to play junior college. And junior colleges in Florida play at the Division one level uh, as far as skill. And, and I can think back on our, my, our junior college teams. Uh, the Manatee team that I was fortunate enough to play on, we had 15 guys drafted off of that one team, ranked third in the country, and uh, lost in a regional finals to Middle Georgia. They were 56-0, and and we were 40-8. and They won the national championship. But again, the, the, what I'm trying to say is it's so tough, and there's so many good players out there that – you don't have to go Division One to, 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 to be able to advance and be successful. So go the level that you're able to play. And then once you get into that collegiate level, then obviously you're getting re-scouted at the professional level. And, and you know, the biggest thing that I saw at the college level, not, not to get back and forth on this, when you get to the college level, you're playing against everybody's best shortstop in high school, which is, Best athlete, best player, most skilled. Our, our junior college team at Manatee had 15 shortstops, 15 three hitters in a lineup at the high school level, and then Coach Hill would put us into the position. So it was absolutely, absolutely incredible as far as the skill level that you were up against to try to get in the starting lineup. So, and then obviously the professional baseball is a whole new world. You know, now you're against different draft level guys. You're against free agents. You're against guys that have been released. It's A ball, double A, triple A, uh, rookie ball. It's, it's crazy. I mean, it's just, it's just unbelievable. It really is. And then you got to throw into the uh, kids that were never drafted because we don't have a worldwide league draft. Now you got Venezuelans, Colombians, uh, kids from, uh, uh, kids from Mexico, kids from, uh, that got out of communist Cuba. Uh, these kids that play baseball 12 months out of the year because the weather allows them to play baseball 12 months out of the year. Now you got to deal with uh, playing against those kids as well. I mean, it just, it's a whole new world and it is, uh, yeah, damn, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Well, and, 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 the, and again, look, physically everybody can play. Everybody can play. Everybody can play at the college level. Um, and then professionally, you know, I always basically, you know, when you go through that, now you look back, you know, a lot of it is just timing where you're at, what organization, who's in front of you, um, you know, a little bit of luck here and there. And before you know, it, you get tripped away and then you get, you know, get called up to the show. But, but it's the, the, the physical part is one thing but you know, as well as I do, Poe, it turns into a real mental grind and it's a day to day mental grind, the ups and downs, on the road, bus rides, uh, getting through slumps. Uh, it, it, and again, uh, just mentally, it's a grind as well as physical. Uh, and if you're not into the game mentally, you're screwed. Uh, there's just no way, no two ways about it. you you got to be mentally strong. And that, I think that's the <laughs> ultimate test from the minor leagues up to the major leagues is how mentally strong are you? I honestly believe the mental aspect of the game is tested in the minor leagues and your trip up from the minor leagues to the major leagues. So when you're now into the major leagues, having graduated from the minor leagues, you are now mentally strong enough to prepare yourself for what you're about to see with the exploding sliders, something that you've yeah, you rarely see in minor league baseball. The uh, everyone sees a fastball of of some variety. 
uh, but you see the extra pitches if you're a hitter that you don't necessarily get a chance to see in in that greatness. Correct, correct. And, you know, the funny thing about that is, and, and, and being in the minor leagues is, you know, everybody thinks, you know, when you, let's just say velocity, pitching. Like everybody gets enamored by velocity from a pitcher. Um, the hardest throwers are in rookie ball, which is, which is the lowest form of professional baseball. That's the lowest level as far as the advancement and progression. The guys that throw the hardest – are the guys in rookie ball. And then, and then, yeah, yeah, there's guys that <clears throat> in the big leagues, we all know they throw 100 miles an hour. You get, especially your closers. But the higher you go, the better pitchers that you see. And, and the real cutoff point is usually double A baseball, double A level. You know, you face guys from double A and up, you get into triple A. You know, you're, you're going to face guys that are able to throw a slider in an off speed pitch where they want it four out of five times. Uh, you get a guy in lower A and rookie ball, you know, he can be all over the place one or two out of five times. So it's the consistency of being able to throw whatever you want to throw in whatever count and be able to get it over. That That is the real key, um, you know, as far as the pitching perspective. And then obviously hitting. Hitting is such a failing thing. Uh, three out of ten is perfection in hitting, and you just failed seven out of ten times. So. You know, we, we all know what, what happens in hitting. You just got to be able to take the ups and downs and fly in the middle as much as you can and not get in that roller coaster um, peaks and valleys as much as just kind of staying in the middle and riding it out. You know, it's a game of streaks. And that's where I just sit back and say, look, you're not a prospect till you hit in double A ball. I mean, you are, but you aren't. Because once you get into double A ball, and I, I remember this as, as as if it were yesterday, Bobby Dickerson, who's now the bench coach in San Diego, he was he was the manager for the for the Diamond Jacks, and, and this was my first year there, so it was two thousand and three, and he had a he had a meeting uh, the night before the opening day, and he said, guys, your cell phones are going to be on all the time because at any point in time from here on out, you could be called to the major leagues. You are now in a league. And in a in, in an area where the major league team is now going to be relying on someone like you to help their major league club out if one of their guys gets on the disabled list, and and the look on everyone's faces when he said that it was like, holy crap! I you know we're that close to the major leagues now. No, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. And it's just you know, and things can happen so fast at, at that double A level. Uh, yeah, and that that's kind of that's kind of the cutoff point. But you're right; it's it's uh, you got to be ready at every at, at any time. And and again, the the mental as well as the physical grind of it uh, is so important. And uh, and it's day to day. And you just you just that's what you live. Uh, that's your life. And um, you you know you you spent uh, a lot of time in it. Um, and it just that's you, you got to get through it. But but obviously everybody's trying to get to the show. And, um, you know, that, that's, that's the real motivating carrot out there when, when you're in the minors. Hey, I got to ask, what are you doing this summer in terms of coaching? To be honest with you, Paul, I'm not actually coaching, I'm not actually coaching per se an, an, an individual team at this point. And I, and even not at high school right now, I'm doing a, doing a lot of private one-on-one instruction, working with a lot of teams. Uh, I'm also running the Penn Ohio baseball league. Which is a league uh, we've have we have like 23 teams in it. it. It allows travel teams to play games during the week, uh, and they go to the tournaments on weekends. So it gives them an outlet to play to play games during the week. So kind of kind of switch gears a little bit. Not not into the actual coaching per se with an individual team, but uh, a lot more instruction, consulting, and running of a league type of thing uh, right now. So it's fun. A little bit different, but uh, you know, you miss that you miss that direct competition day to day working with the, working with the kids in a game situation. But uh, the, the the instruction part of it has really been fun, and then of course, from a supervisor standpoint, administrative standpoint, being able to run a leg job uh, uh, that's been really fun too. A little bit different, but fun. Yeah, giving back to uh, to the community. I mean, uh, you were one of the fortunate ones to uh, to leave this area and go into minor league baseball. I just love the fact you're giving back to the community. Well, the old Woody Hayes theory, pay forward. You know, that's something that I kind of grew up with. And uh, you know, if there's there's any obviously anything that that 
able to do to to pass it on to the youngsters, to to players, coaches as such. Uh, that's what it's all about. You know, look, I, I was able and fortunate enough to learn off a lot of different players and coaches along the way, and and uh, there's no secrets out there. Um, certainly, nobody's reinventing the wheel, and anything I can do to pass it on to help out in any way to make the game better. That's certainly what it's all about, Paul. Hey, just don't slug any player that uh, that that uh, you know hits a home run off of you, like uh, maybe Woody <laughs> did when he slugged the kid on the sidelines. Just don't no, don't, I'm, don't I'm, do anything I'm, like that. All right. Oh no, I'm, I might I might throw behind him, but I'm not going to hit him. <laughs> I, I got to ask when when uh, if if you ever call Bonilla up, do you call him up before January or before July the first Bobby Bonilla day and say, "Hey, you got a couple hundred thousand dollars? Uh, you you can uh, you can lend me." <laughs> I'm telling you, there's, it, it, there's there, that smartest contract ever signed. I mean, it, it's incredible. Uh, and and you know, I, I haven't, I haven't. In fact, I'm not sure exactly where Bobby is right now. I haven't talked to him for a while. But boy, what a great guy! Um, I can remember um, when I was with Prince William. He, him, and of course Bonds were both on the same team. That's the year the Bonds got drafted in June. But Benia was injured in spring training. He got injured. And they put him on rehab, and they sent him to Prince William. So when he when he come to Prince William, he was getting paid not only minor league pay, but he's getting paid big league pay at the time. So he's getting two checks um, every two weeks, and uh, you know it, it, what, what a great guy, um, just a fun guy to be around. But boy, is, is, is not a smarter con. It's incredible. Every year it's like Christmas time. Yeah, every July the first. Now, interestingly yeah. enough, uh, Frankie Lindor is going to be paid every July the first a certain amount of money through two thousand and thirty-one, which is really cool in and of its own right. Except uh, his contract is going to be done, and Bobby Bowes is still going to be going on for three more years. It, it, it's incredible when you think back on that. Yeah. How in the world at that time were they? Was he able to get some? somebody to draw up that cloud track and then be able to sign it and get get the obviously the, the organization to agree to that incredible yeah, absolutely incredible stroke of yeah. genius hey scott always a pleasure look forward to catching up with you soon brother sounds it sounds good Poe. thanks again thanks for your time all right see you uh three three oh eight eight six oh eight one three dan bertolini's coming up next we're going to talk some penguins baseball some hardware to pass out yeah, not only is uh, Colin Floyd getting some hardware, so is Nick Caruso. Uh, we'll tell you why in a bit. Stick around. Your first and last stop with your tax return should be with me, Tracy Bryden at Greenwood Chevrolet in Austintown. No other dealer sells more cars, finances more, and gets you more for your refund than Greenwood Chevrolet in Austintown. WRS Wealth Advisors is the area's premier wealth and retirement specialist. With our combined 70 years experience and comprehensive wealth strategy, we assist our clients attain their goals. Call 330-965-0370 to learn more about our individual and corporate financial planning services or visit wrswealthadvisors.com. Good luck, athletes. Hi everyone, this is DJ Yokely with Your Sports Network. We appreciate your support of YSN and welcome you to the YSN family. Our broadcast streams are brought to you live at no cost to you by sponsors that are local to this community. Without the vision and generosity of our sponsors and partners, we would not be able to bring this game to you today. So please support the great businesses and leaders that are making this game possible. And if you're a business in need of great advertising and sponsorship opportunities, feel free to head over to our site for more information on the right fit for you. We are local, we are loyal, and we are live. We are YSN. Ah, the details. Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods is one fine ride. Perfect cornering, superb handling, sporty and stylish, power to spare, plus awesome mileage. Yeah, jaw-droppingly beautiful lines and well-appointed with luxurious trim. Put more oomph in your life and start beholding the molding. Find your home's fine hardwood at BairdBrothers.com. For heating, cooling, and indoor air quality, the Mahoney Valley trusts MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning, offering worry-free repair, service, and installation. Call MP Vivo today for a free estimate. MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning. We're your energy-efficient experts. 
Planning a project around your home or rental property? Trust the electrical service to the local experts with 62 years of serving the Mahoning Valley. Joe Dickey Electric is your local go-to source for responsive, reliable residential electrical work. From everyday maintenance and repairs to new installations, electrical upgrades, and safety inspections, no job is too big or too small. Call Joe Dickey Electric today, 800-549-3976, or visit DickeyElectric.com. That's DickeyElectric.com. Welcome back to a Tuesday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. If you're in the market for a brand new or slightly used automobile, you owe it to yourself, you owe it to your wallet to check out the good folks at Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. Let's get to the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline where we find the manager of the YSU baseball program, Dan Bertolini. Skip, how are you today? I'm doing great, Ron. How are you? I, I'm doing fantastic. Some hardware to pass out. Uh, Nick Caruso named a national top 30 hitter this past week by D1 Baseball. Uh, Caruso, four for four, three runs shot, six RBI, three runs scored in your uh, uh, series finale over Northern Kentucky. Becomes the first Penguin since Blaze Glenn to do this. Uh, Blaze did it two years ago. Uh, and that's driving in six runs in a game. Boy, a heck of a heck of a game by Nick Caruso uh, in your final game. And, and truth be told, Skip, you needed it because uh, Northern Kentucky had won two of the first three games, and you needed that explosion to get the split. Yeah, he Nick was incredible all weekend. He just got uh, it just came out as well that he was Horizon League hitter of the week. So that's a big congrats to him because he's uh, he's earned it all season. He's had some great weekends for us. I think he's leading our team in RBIs, and uh, he's done a fantastic job. And yeah, we needed all of them. He had a big hit in uh, on the Friday game to keep it close. Uh, you know, we just just the comeback fell a little short on Friday, and um, you know, it was a good weekend. It's tough to win in the Horizon League on the road, and um, we were able to salvage the split, and uh, you know, kept us in a really good position. Yeah, you know, getting a split on the road in the Horizon League is it's just so key. And then and then when you're taking on uh, teams like this weekend, you know you'll be taking on an Oakland team. You now Oakland is uh, has buried themselves, and uh, they're probably not going to be in the in the top four. And this is a home series. Uh, you, you you know the bar is set for this team to uh, to go in there hoping for a sweep. Yeah, we um, you know, every every weekend is difficult. You know, there's no there's no easy games, and uh, we have to make sure that we're, you know, focused and not looking ahead, and just really you know stay uh, stay to task. And um, you know, they're going to provide some challenges. They they've won three games in the Horizon League, so they're very capable of beating anybody. And um, you know, we just have to continue to play good baseball. I thought we played you know overall for the most part pretty well. Uh, sometimes, especially on doubleheader days. If you're struggling a little bit offensively, you know, on, on one day, um, it, it's tough because you got to play two. So, um, you know, you just never know. Uh, you know, each and every day, you got to be prepared and ready to go. You made mention of uh, Caruso having an unbelievable weekend. I got to get back to him because th- these numbers are phenomenal. Seven hits, 13 at bats. It's a 538 batting average. He had a slugging percentage in the four game series of 846. Skip, those are some ridiculously good numbers, and and like you said, you needed those numbers. Yeah, he's you know he's been good all year for us, no matter what. I think he's got three home runs. Um, you know, he's doing exactly what you'd want a, a six-year senior, uh, a leader of our team to to do. He's up. He's been up in a lot of big situations, and you feel comfortable. He doesn't try to do too much. He knows what he he's capable of. He puts a lot of good barrels on the ball, and um, you know had a huge weekend for us. Colin Floyd, uh, you run out of adjectives to describe this kid, but I think the best thing that you can say about Colin Floyd is when you have the seven-inning game uh, in, in, uh, the, in the, one of the games of the doubleheader, as a manager, it's got to be the single greatest feeling knowing that there's a very high percentage chance, as I knock on wood and hopefully not jinx him, that you're going to have a guy that's going to go and pitch – six innings minimum, and more than likely get you the seven innings that you need, uh, and more than likely he's going to uh, give up as a tiny amount of runs, if any, 
and it gives your offense that much of a chance uh, to win the game. It has got to be an unbelievable feeling knowing when Colin Floyd is pitching, there's a really good chance that you're not going to have to use your bullpen, and you got a really good feeling the game is going to be won. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's incredible. You know, he's, I think he's thrown five complete games. He's thrown three shutouts. Um, you know, one of the games in the Horizon League, he gave up one unearned in eight innings, or he'd have his fourth complete game shutout. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he's he's everything. You know, I feel like it's Shane Bieber out there, you know, just giving us a great a great chance to win every single time he's out there. He, you know, I think he's given up, you know, like 22 hits in 44 innings. And sometimes I feel like, once we get one run, we relax a little bit because we just feel like that's enough. And, uh, you know, we had some opportunities to, to make it even easier. The bases loaded in, in, the, in his start with nobody out, up one nothing, and weren't able to score. Um, in those situations, you got to find a way to push one through to, to make it a little bit easier on us. But I think he only gave up two hits, struck out nine or ten. Um, he's been absolutely fantastic all season long. Skip, you guys have won 13 of your last 19 games. The 13 Horizon League wins. Uh, this is the first time that the, this Penguins baseball team has won 13 games, uh, league games, uh, since 2008. And it, the 13 wins in the Horizon League, just the third time in program history. Uh, this is a uh, this is a uh, probably an understatement. Why issue baseball is making an upward trend? Yeah, we've you know we've been fortunate. We've played really well. It is a good group. I mean, I told you that from the beginning of the year. This is a solid, good group from top to bottom. Um, you know, we can we can win in a bunch of different ways. We can win in high scoring games. We can win one nothing, as you saw. Um, we play really good defense, and um, you know we're resilient. You know, a lot of teams. You know, you lose a couple games, and, and you can uh, you know you can spiral. And this group is is got great leadership. Uh, lots of experience, no situations too big. So, um, you know, we, we I think we would have been somewhere similar to this last year if we would have played the 2020 campaign. And, um, you know, it, it even helped us more by getting that extra year of experience because there's some guys that are young that have, you know, got that extra year that have really, really come on strong this year and, and helped us to, to be in the, in the spot that we're at. Dan Bertolini, the manager of the YSU baseball team, joining me on the MPV vote, heating and air conditioning hotline. The fact that you're in a dogfight to, uh, to finish in the top four, I mean, it, it, realistically, unless the Mastodons get insanely hot, and, and Oakland for that matter too, realistically it's five teams battling for four playoff spots. One team is going to get left uh, on the outside looking in. Uh, again, unless Purdue, Ford, Wayne, and Oakland both get hot and get back into this immediately. But the fact that uh, YSU is is trying to stave off Northern Kentucky while trying to jump UIC, who's who's been on a tear as of late, and, and Milwaukee is not too far ahead of Youngstown State as well. Skip, this every single game from here on out is so huge and, and tournament ramifications in every single game. Is that going to bring out the best in your baseball team between now and the end of the year? Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, it, a lot of it is, um, you know, with, uh, with, the, with all the way out, you know, a lot of teams are going to be playing each other. You know, we have – we hold our – basically our destiny in our hands. We have UIC and Milwaukee uh, still. We're, we're fortunate. We have we got a lot of our road games in the Horizon League out of the way. We only have one home, uh, Horizon League series on the road left. Um, and a lot's going to be really determined this weekend. If if we can play good baseball, there's a lot of good series. You know, I think Wright State plays Northern Kentucky and Milwaukee plays UIC. So I think you'll have a little bit clearer picture probably by the end of the weekend. But it's going to be, you know, and, and we wouldn't want it any other way. Uh, you want every game to be meaningful. You want to, um, you know, we've we've waited a long time to play really meaningful games in April and May, and um, you know, to, for a chance to to not only uh, make the tournament, but you know, hopefully, you know, be in the top one or two um, at the end of this. Sixteen league games left. You get a four gamer against Oakland this weekend at Eastwood Field. A four gamer next weekend in Chicago against UIC. Uh, the following weekend, Purdue Fort Wayne comes into town for a four gamer. There's an off weekend 
uh, and and a free weekend as of right now, or at least on the schedule uh, there is. And then the weekend of February, um, February, Jesus, the weekend of May the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd, Milwaukee comes into town and could very well be for a higher seating. Skip, is there a uh, the open weekend, uh, and that would be the 14th, 15th, and 16th, uh, is that still open, or are you guys looking to uh, to bring in someone? No, we that, that weekend scheduled. We're just the technicality. We're working on a contract, but we're we're, we're going to Bellarmine uh, and going to play Bellarmine in Louisville, Kentucky that weekend. All right, Bellarmine is a, a D one program, or is it D two? Yeah, yeah, D1. that's D one. They made they made the transition this year uh, into Division one. Fantastic, and they're they're going to be you're going to be going to Louisville. That's correct. Oh, fantastic. So, uh, obviously, uh, the, the team won't be stale then uh, with the one week off, uh, so that's good. And and, and clearly, uh, boy, a lot of baseball to be played. And, and as, as we mentioned, 12 of the 16 league games uh, yet to be uh, played are going to be at Eastwood Field. And, you know, we mentioned this a few weeks ago, and I guess it bears repeating now that we're talking about it. Youngstown State is the only team in the Horizon League that has a dirt infield, so the kids are going to be making the transition, which I think is an even a bigger transition to go from uh, turf to dirt uh, than it is from dirt to turf. So uh, uh, these guys are going to all be making that that transition from turf to dirt. I like the fact that 12 of the last 16 league games are going to be played in the cozy confines of Eastwood where we've been absolutely ridiculous this year uh record wise yeah yeah i mean you know i, I think anytime you get to play home games uh, especially meaningful ones later in the year uh it's an advantage for you just you know i don't care who you are or where you're going to play um you just when you practice at a place every day and you know how the wind the wind works and how the you know how the field plays and where to position it, it there is an advantage to that and um you know, you just you, like I said, you look up and down the Horizon League. Almost every series has gone to the to the home team. So there's definitely an advantage of of playing at home, and um, it's going to start this weekend against Oakland. They're going to, you know, they'll, they'll provide a good challenge for us, um, and we're going to have to play good baseball to uh, to win some games. You know, it's almost like the baseball gods are smiling at Youngstown State this year, Coach, because I'm looking at their schedule. They haven't played a baseball game since April the third. Uh, they were to have played Valparaiso uh, the, the next weekend after uh, dropping three out of four to Milwaukee. That series was canceled. And then the series against Wright State this past weekend was canceled because Wright State had some COVID issues. Uh, so the last time the Oakland played a baseball game, you got to go back to the 3rd of April. It's going to be 20 days uh, the, the, uh, by the time Oakland gets back on the field because the first game is set for uh, April the 23rd. That's a great advantage for the Penguins. Yeah, it, 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 it's, uh, it's a little scary because you just don't know, you know, it's going to be like a new season for them, a new team basically because they haven't played in a couple weeks. And so, um, you know, I'm sure, you know, that gives them a little bit of extra time to, to prepare and be practiced. I mean, they knew that we were going to be playing us uh, for the last two weeks. Um, they were their their program was on a pause for two weeks, so I'm sure they've had plenty of time to prepare. And um, you know, it's just uh, it's going to be. It's, we've dealt with this before throughout the season. You know, a lot of teams across the country have dealt with it, where teams have come off a off a layoff. You saw a lot in football, um, where football teams would have a week or two off and then have to come back and play. So it's just interesting to see how it works out. But uh, we think it would be you know to our advantage that that we've been able to play these last few weeks and. and um, you know, hopefully they're a little bit sharper than them. Oakland is three and thirteen in the Horizon League, nine and eighteen overall. And as we mentioned, they haven't played baseball in a while. Uh, how difficult is it for you as a manager to try to remind all of your guys, hey, just because this team is not doing well record wise does not mean they can't come back and bite us. Well, I just think I think we've been we've been in those situations before. Um, where we were on the other end of it, and uh, you know, you just we have a lot of experience and a lot of guys that have been through this program for a long time, so they understand that every single weekend is is you know is tough and challenging, and so um, you know, I think the other the other thing too is having a week off in between um, series 
you, know, you get a little bit of time to rest and repair and 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 prepare for for the opponent. So we'll be we'll be ready. We'll be well prepared. And um, you know, we I think all of our guys understand the the opportunity in front of us and and uh, for a chance to us to continue to improve on what's been a, a really good season to this point. Eastwood Field, as you mentioned, has been really, really good to the YSU Penguins. A, a very, very good home record. And, uh, boy, the fan uh, the fan base has been uh, special as well this year, Skip. Yeah, it's been. Uh, and I, I'm sure Friday will be we'll have a beautiful crowd. It's going to be a beautiful night. Um, really looking forward to, to getting back at home. I know um, – you know, our players thrive off off of uh, off of our fans. We've had, you know, I think we had more fans at Northern Kentucky than Northern Kentucky did. So, uh, our fan base travels really well, and, and I'm sure they'll be out in full force this weekend at Eastwood to provide a great atmosphere and should be fun. We love playing here at home and and uh, looking forward to it. Six and two record. Uh, they took three out of four. Uh, the Penguins did three out of four from Wright State. Three out of four from UIC. Uh, again, with uh, the top four teams going into the playoffs, everything is just uh, every win is so so important as we go into the uh, closing stretch of this 2021 Horizon League season. Uh, give everyone uh, your uh, your pitching lineup for this weekend, Skip. Well, we're going to stay pretty similar. Um, Colin Clark will go on Friday. Colin Floyd will throw the seven inning game on Saturday. John Snyder will throw. Uh, the second game on Saturday, and then Nick Perez will throw on Sunday. And uh, I think the one guy that hasn't got a lot of credit this year so far has been John Snyder. Um, he has made a ma- ma- major jump um, from where he was a year ago, even to two years ago, as being a very reliable, uh, very good uh, starter for us. I mean, he threw really well against Milwaukee, got hit with the line drive and kind of kind of changed his outing a little bit, but through a great game against UIC, through a great game against Milwaukee, and then really provided the start that we needed. Uh, one run, uh, gave up a kind of a cheap home run. Um, it was his only run he allowed uh, in that Sunday start, and we really needed that uh, for for our our offense to get going. So I think, I'm looking forward to hopefully him continuing his uh, his great play. Is it safe to say that if Colin Floyd is not having the dominant season uh, that he is right now, there would be a lot more attention uh, given to Snyder? Yeah, I think absolutely. I think so. But you know, I, when you look at depth of pitching staff in the Horizon League, I put up I put ours up with anybody. I know Colin Clark hasn't had the season that he's wanted to, but he he's thrown some great games and gives us a great opportunity to win. And, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to him having a great, great weekend this weekend. But you know, our four starters, you know, it's tough. It, you know, not a lot of teams in the Horizon League are built to have four starts. And if you look um, over the course of the entire season, actually, we've only lost on Sunday twice uh, all season. So uh, we tend to play really well in the last game. Our offense has been, you know, really productive on Sundays. And um, you know, I think for us. You know, the key has been the depth of pitching staff. Even um, Nick Perez has given us great starts for being a true freshman. Um, you know, I think opponents' batting averages are 266 against them. So, you know, he's he's done a good job of get of, of limiting hits. Um, but like as a typical freshman, there's some lapses in in focus where he, he might walk a guy or two, and then you give up one hit, and it, it leads to that that bigger inning. But if he can kind of limit that, you know, it really gives us four great starters. Um, you know, going into this weekend, and I thought the two guys that really had done a great job this weekend was uh, Travis Perry came back after you know really a slow start. He'd been not very good for us early in the season. Um, he was fantastic. He had a great week of practice last week. He looked awesome on the mound. Uh, and then Connor Johnson. Connor Johnson's a guy we're definitely going to lean on a lot more. Threw really well this weekend. I think he's only allowed one hit in uh, in his two appearances. So he's definitely a big guy that we're going to lean on moving forward. Yeah, I, I'm a genu- genuinely excited about the uh, prospects of this team uh, because it's a favorable schedule. Uh, it, it's certainly a schedule that should provide the uh, Penguins more than enough wins to get into the top four. And, and then, as you mentioned, and, and I'll, I'll point them out, Colin Clark, we have not seen the best of Colin Clark. I will guarantee you, uh, before the end of this season, you will see the best of Colin Clark. That cream's going to rise to the top, and when it does, 
oh, dear God, is your pitching staff going to be unbelievable? Yeah, he's had flashes of being, you know, the 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 you know preseason Horizon League pitcher of the year that he that he was voted. Um, it's just been, you know, he hasn't walked a lot of guys. It's just been, you know, a little using a little bit too much of the middle of the plate. And there's just been, you know, instead of getting singles, they've, he's given up some home runs. And I think, you know, down the stretch, uh, he's going to throw really well for us. Uh, be that, be that, really that that anchor on Friday. And then, you know, you win on Friday, and you have Colin Floyd going. In any game that puts you in a great opportunity to at least, you know, to take to take advantage of the series and, and, and get a split at the very least. So, uh, you know, those are he's an important starter, and I know he's going to throw really well this weekend. Skip, uh, best of luck to you this weekend as you take on Oakland, and hopefully the Penguins have a uh, have a crazy good weekend. Get that record to seventeen and eleven, and uh, and get ready for UIC next weekend. Absolutely, I appreciate it. All right, Dan, always a pleasure. Dan Bertolini, he is the manager of the YSU baseball program. All right, we're going to take a timeout on the other side. We're going to talk some hockey. It's been a while since I got my man Callahan uh, on the uh, on the airwaves. I mean, we're we're uh, we're pretty close to the uh, to the postseason uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to the the, the National Hockey League because. Uh, uh, 56 game schedule. Uh, the uh, Penguins have 11 games left on the docket, and currently they are sitting in third place. And as we mentioned uh, Sunday, they had an opportunity to pull to within one point of the um, Washington Capitals. Uh, unfortunately for the Penguins, they ran into a buzzsaw. <laughs> you don't use the word buzzsaw in Buffalo Sabres in the uh, same sentence very often, uh, but Buffalo's been playing some really good hockey as of late, uh, and they stung the Penguins 4-2 to two in Buffalo on, uh, on Sunday. Uh, but the Penguins are uh, currently sitting at 59 points, uh, 45 games into a 56-game season, 28 wins, 14 losses, and three ties. Three points in back of number one, Washington. And they are currently three points ahead of Boston for fourth place. More importantly, seven points ahead of the New York Rangers, uh, the fifth place team, as the Penguins are in action against New Jersey tonight in Pittsburgh. Uh, We'll talk uh, pucks with uh, Tom Callahan. We're also going to be talking... uh, about the Blue Jackets, who have uh, pretty much closed up shop uh, in the trade deadline, trading away their captain. Uh, so we'll talk some Blue Jackets, Penguins, and and basically uh, the NHL in general. That's coming up in a bit. Stick around. It is a Tuesday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austintown. Back in a bit. Your first and last stop with your tax return should be with me, Tracy Bryden at Greenwood Chevrolet in Austintown. No other dealer sells more cars, finances more, and gets you more for your refund than Greenwood Chevrolet in Austintown. WRS Wealth Advisors is the area's premier wealth and retirement specialist. With our combined 70 years experience and comprehensive wealth strategy, we assist our clients attain their goals. Call 330-965-0370 to learn more about our individual and corporate financial planning services or visit wrswealthadvisors.com. Good luck, athletes. Hi, everyone. This is DJ Yokely with Your Sports Network. We appreciate your support of YSN and welcome you to the YSN family. Our broadcast streams are brought to you live at no cost to you, by sponsors that are local to this community. Without the vision and generosity of our sponsors and partners, we would not be able to bring this game to you today. So please support the great businesses and leaders that are making this game possible. And if you're a business in need of great advertising and sponsorship opportunities, feel free to head over to our site for more information on the right fit for you. We are local, we are loyal, and we are live. We are YSN. Ah, the details. Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods is one fine ride. Perfect cornering, superb handling, sporty and stylish, power to spare, plus awesome mileage. Yeah, jaw-droppingly beautiful lines and well-appointed with luxurious trim. Put more oomph in your life and start beholding the molding. 
Find your home's fine hardwood at BairdBrothers.com. For heating, cooling, and indoor air quality, the Mahoning Valley trusts MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning, offering worry-free repair, service, and installation. Call MP Vivo today for a free estimate. MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning. We're your energy-efficient experts. Planning a project around your home or rental property? Trust the electrical service to the local experts with 62 years of serving the Mahoning Valley. Joe Dickey Electric is your local go-to source for responsive, reliable residential electrical work. From everyday maintenance and repairs to new installations, electrical upgrades, and safety inspections, no job is too big or too small. Call Joe Dickey Electric today, 800-549-3976, or visit DickeyElectric.com. That's DickeyElectric.com. New things happen all day. Some are good, some not so good. In today's complicated world, while you're busy working, playing, and living life, we're busy helping you make sense of the day's news. And there's only one place where it comes together with clarity, context, and accountability. It's 21 News at 6 with me, Madison Tromler, and Derek Steyer. 21 News at 6. It's what the day's news really means to you. Welcome home to a home made homier with Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. Inspiration starts at BairdBrothers.com and is turned into reality when high quality hardwoods are delivered right to your home. Baird Brothers has the latest design trends, shiplap and skinny lap interior siding, antique oak rustic flooring, and well, you'll find them all at BairdBrothers.com. Ordered easily, delivered conveniently, enjoyed comfortably. BairdBrothers.com. WRS Wealth Advisors, the area's premier wealth and retirement specialists. Located on South Avenue in Boardman. Hi, this is Jim Myers with Myers Family Insurance, your local Medicare and retirement resource. We're excited to have sports back. Whether you're on the field or cheering from the stands, sports unifies communities and brings hope for the future. We're all one team working together. At Myers Family Insurance, we know the importance of a great team. Our team continues to grow to help you with your Medicare and retirement needs. The annual election period is October 15th through December 7th. Now's the time to make sure your plan continues to meet your needs for the upcoming year. Call today. Hi, I'm Colin Chupa. And I'm Kelsey Clem from K-Squared Marketing. Our boutique marketing firm specializes in media planning and buying, public relations, event marketing strategies, and strategic sponsorships. We can integrate our services with your existing game plan, or we can be your entire marketing team. Your goals, our game plan. Let's, Let's win, win together. together. Call K-Squared Marketing at 330-623-2730 or visit ksquared.marketing to learn more. Welcome back to a Tuesday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. And joining me, it's been a while since he's uh, joined me, on the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline. Let's talk some pucks. Uh, my hockey guru, Mr. Tom Callahan. Tom, how are you, sir? I'm good, Rob. Thanks for having me back. As always, there's uh, a lot of fun stuff to talk about. Yeah, it's uh, ice is uh, is pretty much melted these days in Arizona. I don't want to say it's hot where you are, but um, you could fry an egg on a uh, on a sidewalk these days. Well, down down here they call that spring, um, <laughs> so it's it's not too bad yet. It's not too bad yet. It's uh, we're we're not getting stupid yet, but it's uh, it's warm. Well, uh, Penguin fans were kind of hoping that the Penguins would be that caliber of hot. Uh, Sunday afternoon, they go into Buffalo, a team that they had pretty much owned for the last 12 years. Uh, Buffalo had not had a, regulated, a regulation win in Buffalo against the Penguins since 2008. And lo and behold, the Buffalo Sabres, who have been playing some damn good hockey since they got rid of uh, Freddy Krueger, uh, no, that's not his name, it's, but Coach Kruger. I called him Freddy Kruger because it was Nightmare on uh, on Buffalo Street. Uh, Buffalo gets a victory over Pittsburgh 4-2, to two and, and couple that with Boston's victory over Washington. Penguins lost a golden opportunity to put two points closer to them in first place Washington on Sunday. 
They did. Uh, and, you know, Buffalo is not an easy out run. Uh, and that's that's a, a thing right now that, uh, you know, they're starting to pick it up a little bit. I, they're not really going to be a threat to do much of anything. But, uh, you know, could they play themselves out of a last place? I guess that's possible. Uh, but, you know, the Penguins, and that's, that's kind of the thing right now, is all the points are so valuable because of the way this year is set up. Every game is a four-point game. You're always playing in your division. Every game is always four points worth of whether you're picking up those four points or whether you're denying another team uh, the ability to gain ground as well. And so everybody thought, well, Buffalo is a pushover all season long. Well, now that they're a, a tough opponent in the end of the season, teams that are already done with Buffalo in the season series actually appear to have that, that bit of an advantage. Washington took care of business against the Sabres. They took that whole season series without batting an eye. And, uh, you know, I think that that's something Pittsburgh is, is going to regret. You bear down and play the Sabres. All right, so the Penguins right now are in third place, and, and, and they're comfortable in their uh, in their playoff run. I, I mean, uh, uh, fifth place, the New York Rangers, they're seven points in back of Pittsburgh, uh, and they're going to play 56 games. It's not like the mess in the North Division, which we'll get to in a moment. Uh, but it looks like the Penguins, barring a complete collapse, they're going to be in the playoffs. But you got to be able to uh, to get into the postseason on a good note. And for the Penguins, you get that uh, loss against Buffalo out of your system as quickly as possible. Uh, and the uh, first game back is tonight. They uh, they welcome in New Jersey, a team that, uh, much like Buffalo, their season is over. Tom, you there? Yep, yep. And, uh, and, you know, you're right with New Jersey, Ron. The season's kind of over, uh, except that it's not. You're playing for pride. You're playing to be a spoiler. Uh, you're, you're playing because you really need to establish some things for all these bottom-dweller teams. Number one, you got to look at who's going to be there for you next year and uh, who you want to bring back maybe if you have a contract situation or two. Plus, don't forget, we have an expansion draft coming up. Um, you may end up being a member of the Seattle Kraken. You could play your way right off a roster. So, you know what? I'm, I'm looking at this as even the teams that are out of it have something to play for, and probably more so than in a normal year because of just how odd the season has been. So yeah, there's no nights off. Uh, you know, and the Penguins really have to figure out a way um, to be consistent throughout the lineup. Goaltending, defense, offense, they just haven't done it. Uh, they have not shown that they've, they've got that ability yet. And look, they've gone flying up the standings, but now there's only a couple of weeks till we hit the playoffs. Now you have to be playing your game every single night for 60 minutes. I just don't see that yet. Tom Callahan joining me on the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline. You know, you brought up the Seattle Kraken, uh, which will be uh, playing in the National Hockey League next year, and, and every team is uh, going to leave some players exposed in the expansion draft. For a veteran-based team like the Pittsburgh Penguins, could there be some notable names that could very well find themselves in a Kraken uniform in the 2021-2022 inaugural season? I think so. Um, I think You know, it's interesting, but uh, when the Penguins traded for Jeff Carter, I thought he could be a Kraken, uh, or at least exposed. Not, no guarantee they'd take him. But, you know, uh, having that extra year of term under contract right now, as opposed to ending up having to sign something this, this off offseason, uh, you know, some teams wanted that. Some teams wanted guys with another year or two uh, of term to make it more attractive, perhaps, in the expansion draft. Uh, I think, and, and by the way, for those who might not know, Vegas is exempt. Uh, they took less of a share of the the when they came into the league in exchange for exemption from Seattle's expansion draft. So it'll still be picking from 30 teams. I think that, uh, Ron, we're going to be surprised, and we're also going to start to see now that Seattle's GM, Ron Francis, is going to start to make deals with teams that don't want to expose guys. Likewise, you may get a phone call from a general manager of a specific team who says, look, I would really like you to take you know, Jimmy Jones off my roster. We don't want him anymore. He's going to be here for a couple of years. In exchange, we will float you a couple of picks or something else. And 
you know, and, and also in exchange for protecting maybe another player on the roster. So these deals are going to start to happen uh, once the regular season ends with the teams that are out of the playoffs, if they're so inclined. And then as teams are eliminated from the playoffs right up through the draft, I think you're going to see those things uh, start to happen. You know, when we get you back on uh, come playoff time, I want to go through this whole ordeal with what Seattle is going to be doing. Uh, it, it's been a while since we've had an expansion team uh, in any sport, and the rules that the NHL set forth in how they put together their team, uh, Seattle could get good pretty quick. Now, I don't know if they can duplicate what Vegas did, uh, where where they were great right off the get-go. Uh, but I think that Seattle could very well use that blueprint and, and be pretty solid uh, based on what the NHL allows them to do. Uh, the NHL has set up these expansion drafts differently for Vegas and for Seattle than they did for, say, the Columbus Blue Jackets when they came into the league or any other team that came in around that time, Minnesota, Nashville, any of those. Uh Back then, you were set up, you were going to come in, you were going to be a bottom dweller, you going to take everybody on your team as a bunch of cast-offs, and you had to build from there. That is not how the NHL set up Vegas. They knew they needed hockey to succeed in that market right away for, for two reasons. Number one, uh, and people still use the term non-traditional, I'm not a fan of that, but you know, it's a market where there were no pro sports, you had the first kick in the can. And hockey had been popular there, but the NFL was coming. And it was mission critical that the NHL beat the NFL to the punch when the Raiders moved in a year later. Vegas had already been successful. They had secured a fan base. That was exactly what they wanted. And Seattle's a different market, but it's the same thing. The NHL wants to see Seattle succeed as quickly as they can so they can establish themselves. Uh, And that looks good for the league. Well, Seattle and Vancouver will have one hell of a rivalry, but right now Vancouver is the epicenter of some serious problems uh, in the Northern Division. Uh, Everyone is supposed to be playing 56 games in the regular season, and poor Vancouver, everyone, and I do mean everyone on this hockey team, has run into a bout with covid and Vancouver has been shut down for a little bit. Uh, and because of that, uh, they've recently started playing again. But because of the fact that they were shut down, Vancouver is right now at 38 games where the rest of the North is anywhere from 43 to 46 games. I don't see how everyone's going to be able to play 56 games because it's going to be damn near impossible for Vancouver to play 18 games over the next two weeks. How in the world are they going to even things out in the North Division? Well, I, you know, it's funny you bring this up because I just did a podcast on this. Uh, my Talking Puck podcast, actually it came out this morning, uh, talking about this exact situation. And the league, the league is holding fast. They still want 56 games for everybody. They've said they're going to extend the regular season by a week, which is what they built in to begin with. But as you rightly point out, Vancouver's missed more than three or four games. They've missed several weeks. Uh, And the disparity is just so glaring. And now Vancouver's not making the playoffs. Um, It's just, you know, it's not really going to upset the balance of power too much, but teams maybe that had taken advantage of Vancouver again early got the points out of it you might not have that chance now. But, um, you know, Ron, my thing is, number one, the league needs to stop clinging to this notion of everybody must play 56 games for exactly this reason. There are a lot of guys who were and some guys still are really sick. Uh, you know, the COVID knocked the crap out of these guys, and they're struggling. So to expect them to be back at full health. I mean, they were talking about maybe having to put their their AHL team on the ice at one point, but the problem is the Utica Comets got hit with coronavirus too. Um, So, I mean, you know, there's, they have to let go of 56 games and they have to embrace winning percentage for this year. The AHL does it every single year, just because the West plays fewer games. They need to say, look, 
It's a crazy year. We bent the rules last year. We're bending it again this year. I know teams will complain about draft position, but at the end of the day, win percentage is a fair indication of how good your team was, regardless of the number of games played. Now, you just need to say, look, accept it. That's what it is this year. Now, unfortunately, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play devil's advocate here, uh, in, in hockey, you've got the overtime wins and you've got the overtime losses. And there's going to be some teams that are going to look in and say, well, wait a second. You know, we went to overtime. If we're going to do this, then by God, let's go and let the, have these things be ties. So then we go with a win percentage, wins and losses. Yeah, and, and it is the first tie break in the playoffs of what they call row, which stands for regulation and overtime wins. Shootout wins don't count in that weight. So a regulation or overtime win is a tiebreaker at the end of the year and is going to be valuable in a lot of situations this year. And I can understand teams that are going to be upset by that. Uh, and if, if you just run the numbers in the North Division right now, nothing changes as far as standings, whether it's points or win percentage. Uh, you know, again, draft position, some teams might complain about it, but I don't think it's going to change that much and, and – I don't know. Everybody wants something to complain about, Ron. Uh, it, look, it's a weird year. It's going to be a weird draft because the Ontario Hockey League today, three primary junior leagues, canceled their whole season. They haven't played a game. So no one in that league has been scouted. It's going to be a crapshoot draft this year. I don't know how much draft position or even round position is going to matter. It's Look, it's a strange year. The NHL needs to put its foot down and say, look, this is how it is, and it has to be this way because to ask Vancouver to play, you know, 18 games, as you said, 18 games in three days uh, or, or whatever, you know, silly figure it was, I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but it, that's, that's hard to do. If you have to play five out of every seven days to finish your schedule, that, no one's going to hold up to that, and I just really hope the, the league realizes that. And in reality, uh, let's be honest, Montreal right now has a six-point lead on Calgary. Now, six points is not hard to, uh, to, to accumulate. I mean, if Montreal goes on a losing streak and Calgary uh, wins three consecutive games, well, we're back to square one. That would be under normal circumstances. Here's where the rub is. Montreal's only played 43 games this year. Calgary's played 45 Montreal is a six-point lead on Calgary with two less games. So in theory, that six-point lead could be a ten-point lead by the time Montreal catches up games-wise with Calgary. So, I mean, I'm with you. There's no flipping way Calgary is catching Montreal for the four spot. Your top four teams are going to be Toronto, Winnipeg, Edmonton, and Montreal. And that's just the end of that. Yeah, Calgary hasn't shown me enough, and it's funny. They lost again last night, but Montreal lost. And Milan Lucic from the Flames was quoted as saying, well, you know, it's not as bad that we lost, but we got to start winning some hockey games. Uh, Calgary didn't really do anything. In fact, they traded one of their, their potential scores, but they're going through a coaching change. And, look, they're going to clean house, especially in the off offseason. Uh, this is not a team built for the playoffs right now. They They have their stud goalie for the next – you know, six years, but beyond that, I would say everything's going to be up for grabs, and I think the North is settled. I think a lot of the divisions are settled, at least in the top three, uh, and that fourth spot is really the only thing up for grabs at this point. Well, uh, clearly in the uh, in the central it is, with Carolina, uh, Florida, and Tampa Bay. I mean, the four spot, you got a dogfight between uh, Nashville and uh, and and Dallas and and Chicago and yeah Nashville has a three point lead but they've also played three more games uh, than Dallas uh, and and Chicago has forty six games they're forty seven points Dallas has forty four games they got forty eight points Dallas probably has a really good chance to get the four spot in the Central yeah Dallas actually looks like they're heating up too they seem to be finally pulling it together they've been so streaky this year. Uh, hot and cold. Nashville played its way from being a seller at the deadline to a buyer with a five-game win streak. 
uh, and they, they look pretty good heading into that deadline, winning five in a row. Uh, obviously, you're going to cool off at some point, but yeah, as you mentioned, on games in hand this year are so huge because, as we talked about a few minutes ago, they're all four-point games. They are all against members of your division, and if you know Nashville goes head-to-head with Dallas and Dallas takes care of business, not only does Dallas creep up in the standings, but they push Nashville down. All right, when we get back to normal, uh, is, is there a temptation to leave everything as is uh, by the by the uh, muckety-mucks in the NHL, or are we going to go back to normal where Seattle will join uh, a team in the, in the West, Pacific Northwest, including the Canadian teams like Edmonton and Calgary and Vancouver, uh, it, are we going to have four geographically friendly teams, including uh, the Canadian teams, encompassing the uh, Pacific Division and, and so on? Or is there the possibility, albeit strange, that possibility of leaving things where they are? I would be shocked if they stayed in four separate divisions. Um, I think a lot of guys kind of are sick of seeing the same teams all the time. Uh, I think they'd like to go back to conferences. It is kind of a wild thought this year, though, that we're so used to our traditional matchups that there is a very real possibility two teams from the same quote-unquote conference could end up facing off in the Stanley Cup. Toronto and Tampa Bay could meet in the final. Uh, so that's that's super unusual. You know, That's not something we've ever really talked about. Or, or, or Boston and Toronto could meet. Uh, or wouldn't that be crazy? So... You know, while those things are possibilities, I think there is that sense that they want to go back to East versus West, that you're going to see Seattle in a Pacific division. Uh, Arizona is going to shift to the Central. Everything's going to be eight teams per division, uh, two divisions in each conference, and then we're going to go back to, to what it was. Now, things that I don't think will go back to normal, I think we're going to have the sponsorship deals. Uh, like we've seen for the division names, and we see the helmet stickers now, and now jerseys are going to have patches, be eligible for jersey patches and advertising 2022. So it, it's changing. It's evolving. The sport is evolving that way. But, um, you know, as far as the, the divisional realignment, I think they have every plan to go back to what it was. Hey, before we let you go, because we're running out of time, Patrick Marlowe did something last night that – I never thought I'd uh, live to see anyone go past the great Gordie Howe for amount of games played in the National Hockey League, and and here he is. He passed over Mr. Hockey. Incredible, and it kind of nuts that it's not getting more attention. But Patrick Marlowe, who's a quiet guy, doesn't really seek the spotlight himself, but he's been playing... uh, for a long time and is now the NHL's all-time leader in games played. Now, Gordie Howe did play four seasons in the WHA and actually has almost 2,200 games as a pro. Uh, But Marlowe in the NHL uh, has now broken Gordie Howe's record. And if you look at Marlowe, just a a, a marvel of durability, consistency, uh, you know, just the ability to play lots and lots of games. And for a long time, that San Jose Sharks team that he's been a part of pushed deep in the playoffs. So it's not like he just played 82, called it quits, and had a long summer to recover. Uh, they made some deep pushes. And Marlowe surpassing that, just incredible. And the respect shown to him last night by both teams, he broke the, the mark in Vegas, uh, but also there were Sharks fans on hand. His family was there in Vegas. Uh, just, I mean, absolutely incredible. And, uh, you know, a player who has just exemplified the the good things in the game and the right things in the game, and and it's a shame he doesn't have a Stanley Cup, but, uh, man, what what an incredible record. I can't imagine 1,786 NHL games. That is crazy. And, Ron, the other thing I pointed to you before we kind of hopped on here was tomorrow night he plays his 900th consecutive game consecutive that's 12 seasons without missing a game that's insane well in a violent sport like hockey where uh, you know you take a puck to the face and you can be out for a while i mean that's amazing that he's going to be playing in his 900th straight game that's good god that's impressive it, it really is it really and it's i mean take a moment and just 
respect, not only what Gordie Howe did, because he did it in an era where everybody played a tough and physical game, but you know that Marlowe's been able to survive the grind of the modern NHL and live in the West Coast with San Jose, having to worry about, you know, flights and their travel's not great. Um, you know, it's just, it's it's very impressive what, what he's done and definitely deserves every single bit of recognition it'll get. Hey, Tom, before we let you go, I know you have been ex- incredibly busy with your own podcast, and then you got Talking Puck on uh on uh, on Twitch, uh, let everyone know where you can be heard. Thanks, Ron. Uh, so follow me on Twitter at Callahan on Air, uh, and I put out a lot of information there. But on Sunday nights on Twitch TV slash Talking Puck, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, myself and uh, former Colorado Avalanche voice Mike Haynes, we do a show that uh, goes for about an hour and talk hockey and take listener questions or viewer questions, as it were. And then uh, I have a podcast you can get anywhere you uh, you subscribe to podcasts, uh, also called Talking Puck. And, uh, yeah, I would appreciate anybody who wants to subscribe and follow along. And I am the editor-in-chief of VegasHockeyNow.com, so I do an awful lot of coverage of the Golden Knights uh, through that website. So if you're, uh, if you're interested in the VGK, uh, they are now the number one team in the NHL, Ron, as of last night. Uh, it's a very interesting time to be a Vegas fan. Yeah, Vegas and Toronto in the uh, in the uh, playoffs could be fun. It really could. It could be an amazing run, uh, and uh, I, I actually am really looking forward to the playoffs this year. I think this is going to be, and it's going to be one time only. I really think they're going back to normal next year, but, man, this year's going to be a hoop. No doubt about it. Tom, always a pleasure. Look forward to catching up with you soon, brother. Thank you, Ron. Take care. We'll talk to you soon. All right. See you. Tom Callahan uh, getting our uh, puck on, as it were. All right. We're out of here. Uh, have a great rest of your Tuesday, everyone. Many, many thanks to uh, Scott Knox calling in, uh, talking some high school and, and college baseball and the pros. Uh, Dan Bertolini uh, checking in as he does every Tuesday at 2 o'clock. And we also had Tom Callahan talking some pucks. Uh, Thanks for tuning in. We will do it again tomorrow. Anthony's back, and we'll have a lot of stuff to talk about tomorrow on a Wednesday edition. Uh, We'll have Brian Tolnar in uh, as well talking some golf. Uh, That'll be tomorrow uh, on a Wednesday edition of Running Points on YSNlive.com. Have a great day.